30 p.m. Tuesday, May 5th, 2020, to order via teleconference on YouTube. Our agenda this evening is items mostly for the budget. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Ms. Talbot. Mr. Borowie. Present. Mr. Jinks. Here. Ms. Nichols. Chairman Orris. Here. Mr. Slocum. Here. Mr. Talbot. Here. Mr. Velliber. Present. Mr. Walsh. Here. You have a quorum of both the council and the budget committee. Great. Thank you. With this, uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh -oh. Stan, do you have a... I got it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Okay, at this point, I'll turn it over to our budget chair, Mr. Borrowy. All right, Mr. Orris, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everybody. This is, I believe, our sixth of our workshops and uh, quite a bit to cover tonight. We have a department to review uh, that affects everybody in one way or another in town and is very diverse in its ex expenditures. Mm -hmm. And uh, so really does cover the gamut of different types of expenditures in, in terms of material and uh, personnel, but also a lot uh, gets accomplished through them that affect people in town. So it's quite a bit to look at and let's get started right away. I'll hand it over to the town manager, Sean Kimball, please. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will um, begin, let's see, George, I think uh, if, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and, and pull up your, your screen. Uh, so we'll just dive right in if that works for everybody. Give me one second. And all right, George, you can take it away. We should have um, about 10 or 15 minutes of a presentation here and then uh, ample opportunity to ask questions. And obviously, there's a lot of ground to cover here. So, um, George, you want to take it away? Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for allowing us to come before you tonight and kind of give you an old uh, of course <clears throat> i'm joined on this broadcast by walt gankars who's our town engineer and scott hallier who's our treatment plant superintendent so they'll be coming in and out as as uh, their portions of this this uh presentation permit um but again thanks thanks for allowing us to to come on and uh kind of tell you a little bit about public works and, and what we do um we've we've taken to calling this presentation the uh, the Joe Friday and Jerry Maguire presentation around the office so it's just the facts and show me the money so we're going to try to distill it to, to that point and, uh, and in respect for your time try to give you give you kind of a uh, the, the meat and potatoes of this thing um, before we start I'd just like to give a special thanks to Ann McBain who did a lot of work on this on the what you're going to see as far as the presentation so um, she she was uh, very instrumental in making making this uh, kind of a holistic approach. So with that, um, Mr. Manager, I'll uh, ask you to flip the slide, please. So our, our mission statement, and I, I won't read this to you or anything, but basically public works, uh, I'm sure everybody knows this, takes care of the infrastructure of the town, whether it be town buildings, roads, sewers, sidewalks, anything which, which uh, has t is town property, and allows us to provide a safe infrastructure for the residents to go about their daily lives or to enjoy their off time in the parks or, or whatever they choose to do. That's that's our all part of our mission. So next slide, please. Oh, thank you. Um, so the, these are some of the kind of the metrics of public works, if you will. Um, many of you have seen this before, so I won't belabor this too much, but we have about 120 miles of sewer in town, which is, is usually pretty uh, pretty surprising to most people. We maintain about 180 vehicles over the course of the year. Um, that's multiple services per vehicle, but there's about 180, and that includes the police department, some of the fire department, uh, their routine vehicles, I'll call it. Um, Public works vehicles, of course, senior center, board of ed, all those kind of get rolled up into the into that number. 
We've got 152 miles of road in town nowadays. Um, that's 304 lane miles. Uh, the, the 152 is what we call center line miles. Um, 21 buildings, almost 200,000 square feet of buildings in town, 1,500 acres of open space, five major parks, and many of those are really sports facilities when you, when you look at them. Um, 107 miles of sidewalks, seven and two thirds miles of linear trail, and 43 employees that are scattered around to do all that, uh, that work and, and keep the infrastructure um, in, intact or in making improvements to it. So next slide, please, sir. This is just our organizational chart, just to give you an idea of how, how the, uh, all these forces are spread out through the department. Um, I, I won't go through this in great detail. You can look at it at your leisure. And if there's any questions that come up, we can always refer back to it. But we have, I would call four major divisions. Um, the engineering division, the highways and grounds, which is the, by far the largest division, kind of the office staff, if you will, the administration, and then the water pollution control department, which is under Scott Hallier, and they obviously take care of the treatment plant and, and all the sewer system in town. Um, so that's the 43 employees are scattered out through this organization chart. Next slide, please, sir. Just as a budget overview, and uh, once we get into the, the meat of this, please feel free to stop me anytime and or, or whoever's speaking, and we'll, we'll try to dive deeper into some of these numbers if you if you want to get into it um, but uh, this is this is obviously the overview so the the public works department the uh, the recommended <coughs> number for for this budget year um, was an increase at 225 almost two hundred twenty six thousand dollars about a three point five percent increase the public properties which we maintain as well um, was a 0.22 percent increase and the water pollution control department actually was a decrease by seven and seven and a third um, percent, and we'll we'll talk about that in a minute when we discuss their their particulars. So that's an overview of all the the sub pieces that make up public works. Um, one of the next slide, please, sir. One of the the big changes this year um, is involves some personnel actions. Um, we we have a, an, an excellent town engineer in Walt Gancars. He's been with us for about seven years now. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about Walt. He, he's a tremendous person, tremendous professional. He's, he's done so many good things for the town with many bridge replacements we've done in the past. Grants that we've, millions of dollars of grants have, have happened on his watch or we've, we've received due to his diligence. Um, he oversaw, along with Scott and Dennis, the complete renovation of the treatment plant a few years ago, $32 million. Um, just tremendous person. Um, he has given the town uh, time, effort, anything you could ask from him. He, he's been fantastic. And he's never, he's never been a full-time employee. So at his, at his height, he was working four days a week but if the, the reality is he was working five or six days a week and he, he wasn't billing the town for his, his extra time. Just, uh, but that's indicative of the type of person he is. But somehow um, he, he's going to retire sometime in this fiscal year, early next fiscal year, and we've got to replace him. So there's, uh, in this budget, there is a full-time town engineer budget. Um, and with that, we've, we have a need um, for a capital projects manager who is a person who could who is already on the payroll who might transition to some different uh, different responsibilities but dealing with capital projects through the PBC um, different projects we have in town with bridges culverts um, and building projects that are going on in the town buildings so this is kind of a two-pronged approach at that and we'll we'll go into that uh, more as 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 much as you would like as we go through this um, so next slide, please, sir. I'll, I'll let Scott jump in on this one. This is the water pollution control division. This is, I, I asked, uh, he and I, I, I asked Scott and Scott complied with, uh, uh, we try to go through our budgets and just flag some of the big changes. So we're trying to get these up front to you. 
so you can, if, if it spurs any conversation, great. Or if you want to go into more details on some of the stuff that's not covered, you're, um, you're, you're certainly welcome to it. So Scott, please uh, talk to these and we'll take it from there. Okay, so the first item you see on there is the personnel account. Um, I did put it in an increase for uh, the our electrician position to become a full-time position from 30 hours a week to 40 hours a week. Um, I've been using him more to supplement the operators with the fact that we are short one person from last budget. And um, I think if I was able to have him full-time, it would help a lot more to supplement that lost position. Um, that's one of the minor increases in that account. The big increase is that um, between the water pollution control and public works, they've added that we're going to uh, split the salary of the new town engineer, um, half of it from, from my budget and half of it from George's budget. Um, the next item is the heating oil. Um, we're, we, we're, we're going from 40,000 to 60,000. Looks like a big increase. Um, the prior year we had been using store oil from the Board of Education. That's why the number was a little bit lower. Um, in reality, we generally spend around 60,000. So that's where you're going to see the increase there. Um, and the natural gas, the third item, natural gas. Um, we did just last year finalize our um, new generator at the West Johnson pump station, which we renovated. And that's fully online, so we needed a, uh, an increase for the uh, for natural gas for the generator. Those were the three big items that I saw in there. Do you have any questions? No, I think we can move on. Thank you. Sure. Well, <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Uh, we'll go through the public works budget oh. at this point. Um, and I'll, I'll take you through. There's a few more in this, but um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't see any pictures, Mr. Orris. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I do have a question. If this is the time you want to ask questions, or do you want to wait till the end to ask them all? Uh, no, uh, go. I'm sure it's germane to uh, what's up. Well, right it's, now. it's to the WPCA. I'm just curious. Um, can the can you just spell out? It looks like you lumped the labor increases to two different positions in here. Can you break out what the cost of the increase of the electrician is and can you make sure that whatever number you give us includes benefits and everything you're going from 30 hours to 40 hours uh but that i assume puts it in a category that's going to require more benefits is that correct um no no the um it may no the uh, benefits 30 hour position he receives full benefits full medical and everything else Okay, so everything's the same there. Okay. Right. So It'll be an increase. Can somebody just break out those two different uh, positions for us at some point, George? Bob, it looks, sure. um, look, it looks like the, um, the engineer's about 58,000 that's hitting yep. WPCA, which means that the, the electrician's about 20K. Because I had that circled on mine as well. So 20K to go 10 more hours. It's um, well, actually, it's based on it's going to be 20 more hours because we're based on a, a two week um, payroll. Yeah, it's going from 30 to 40. So, so, so basically, well, it's going from 60 hours because we, we do a two week payroll. So it's going from 60 hours to 80 hours. So 10 more per week. But payroll wise, it's 20 hours per pay period. But so when they count, so when they calculate the pay years. periods. It's 20 grand a year to get 10 more hours per week. Per week, yes. That's correct. That's correct. Yep. Thank you. That's my question. Thank you. Well, In no. connection with that question, if I may, this is Tim Slocum. Uh, sure. Did you indicate when you were talking about uh, increasing the electrician's hours, it was to basically keep him there? not to do more electrical work, but to also be there more to help the rest of the gang in the, in the, in the department. Is that, is that correct? Did I mishear that or did I hear that? Correct. No, that is correct. We're, we, we would use them to supplement as an, as an additional person to supplement the operators that are here in addition to his uh, electrical duties. Okay. So this is, so he would be more is... like, he would be more like a utility, he'd be an electrician, but also a utility man. 
He's a flex guy that doesn't break uh, union and electrician rules, I guess. I mean, they can be commingled. I always thought of electricians as a more expensive asset. Uh, maybe they're well, not. They're, he's not, a, he's not in, his, in an electrical union. He's in the uh, actually in the wastewater union. So he's in the same union. In other words, uh, he just yes. has the skill set to be an electrician and do the electrical yes. stuff. And the other, the other people do not. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. So and he is, I have another follow-up to Mr. Slocum. Sure. In the conversation, because I, I heard the same thing. Uh, are we into more overtime as a result of needed hours by this individual? And are you trying to reduce overtime by adding hours on a regular basis? Or are we- Yes, I'm actually- areas? Will we see a reduction in overtime if we approve this? You, I would think you would see a reduction in overtime. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay, well, because we're down one position. And I, and I appreciate that, but um, one of the things that everyone understands is that we're dealing in very difficult times right now. And we're I understand. working hard to make sure we minimize budgets on the backs of our taxpayers. And um, again, I mean, don't disrespect to your statement. I, I understand you hope that's the case, but I would really want, if I'm going to seriously consider this, I would want certainty relative that we're going to see the reduction somewhere else otherwise for me personally i can't support this kind of an increase in light of the situation that we're dealing with so uh, we're looking to cut expense and i'm not looking to add to labor at this point unless you can show us that we're going to have a material saving somewhere else as a result of so thank you mr barry thank you mr barry yes yes mr Hi. walsh yeah, um, I had a question going along the same lines as Mr. Orris uh, about the overtime. Um, you said that you found that you needed a more, so in the past year, how much extra overtime was he making and to justify to add the, the $20,000 more? Was he, did we pay him more he than 20000 He wasn't making the overtime. He was not? No, the other operators are making the overtime. That's why I was hoping to make him full-time to eliminate some of the overtime. Okay, so do you know, because uh, it would help to know if the others were doing it, how much stuff would he be doing that we paid overtime for? Is, is will we be saving money in the long run? Like, that's what I think we're trying to figure I, out. And I can understand it. I could have, I'll have to go back and, um, <clears throat> and, and generate some numbers along those lines. Okay. I would be happy to do that. Thank you. And I had one other question about the heating oil. Um, uh, it says 20% change, but you know, 40 to 60 is a 33% increase. And um, uh, with heating oil and everything else is down this year. Um, I know you, you said you underestimated last year, but I mean, to go up by $20,000 sounds a lot, especially with the oil prices right now being down. Who knows where they're going to be? But if you lock in, um, you know, now I think it, it, you probably want to be up up there. So I'm just wondering how, how much did you go under last time and are we trying to make up from last year? Uh, I, I believe the, uh, George, maybe you can help me. I believe the um, heating oil bid has already gone out to contract with the town. I don't know what the uh, prices that came back at. Yeah, uh, Councilman Walsh, we're, we're locked into a heating oil contract um, already, unfortunately. Um, that I believe goes through the end of the year, uh, the, the calendar year. Um, but I'll double check that. Last, last year, um, they spent $66,777 on heating oil um, in the department. So it's- uh, um, it, What did they budget last year for? That a little higher. Well, George, that's not true because what you're showing on your 1920 <clears throat> statement is 40 grand. 40,000, right. And what I thought I heard the gentleman say was that you use some kind of surplus from the Board of Ed. Can somebody explain that? We, we have the, I guess I, I'll qualify that the, the last year's appropriation was 40,000 and actually used 66,000. So these, these are the, the actual means. It was the appropriation, unfortunately. It should have said, uh, you should have worded that a little differently. That's not the way we usually present it, I don't think. Is it, Sean? I'm just curious. So so that's what you budgeted, but that's not what you actually spent. Correct. The, the, the actual usage was 66777 All right. So that's that, 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 that was 19, George. 
Oh, fiscal 19. Yeah, that was fiscal yeah. 19 yeah. with 66, 777. And it's estimated this year they'll spend 60,000. Right. So, I mean, it's it's consistent with what they've been spending. I think the appropriation was just low last year at 40. Well, I, I guess my only point is this chart is very misleading to me because I read this as you actually spent $40,000 and now we're going to $60,000. What you're saying is we budgeted 40 and you spent 60 something, which either way is not a good scenario because the person who budgeted it obviously didn't do a very good job. But I, I think this chart's very misleading to me and I think that's probably what Mr. Walsh is trying to get it. Yeah, it was just it didn't make sense because anything anytime I see going up 30 percent, uh, 33 percent is, is, is a big increase because you say 20 percent change, but that's not a 20 percent change. really. Correct. Um, why yeah, don't... on this chart, the actual for 20 should be the estimated actuals for 20. I'm sorry, the 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 appropriated 20. Thank you. Right. Correct. <clears throat> So that should say appropriated instead of estimated. It says actual. Normally what we have is a budget and then actual spent <laughs> side by side. So you can tell. Right. When I right. see actual, I'm assuming that's what we spent. So this chart is very misleading. Right. We're still in this fiscal year, of course. So that's the that's why. No, I I I agree. Um was there another question I uh, I, I lost well, one of the I, I think since this is a separate enterprise fund anyway, why don't we stay with this WPCA and see if other council members have questions regarding this? Sure. Because it is separate. It, it doesn't uh, affect the mill rate in that it only uh, affects the charge, the use charge to those uh, who have sewers uh, in town. So let's stay with this before we get into items that will have more of an effect on the uh, operating budget and the mill rate. Um, Mr. Barwee. Yes, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Talbot, I see you. Thank you. So the um, the question about uh, overtime is on page 127 of the detail book or the line item book under 5105. Um, the actual for 2019 was 58116 against a budget of 45,000 and the 45 has stayed flat for uh, fiscal year 20. And then the uh, the request is still forty five, so it's 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 not going down as a as a result of the extra hours for the uh, for the electrician. We don't have the extra hours for the electrician yet. I'm requesting those. Yeah, no, but that's that's part of the budget. So I'm just I saying put, there, there the is no offset from there isn't an offset for. Um, for the increased hours based on the well, overtime. If you, don't, if, if you don't give me the electrician, then, then the overtime is going to probably remain about the same. So are you um, implying that if we do uh, give the extra 10 hours, that there might be an offset here, that we might not spend as I'm much hoping, as I'm hoping there will be an offset in the overtime. OK, so that's good to know. But to Mr. Mr. Talbot's point, this doesn't make any sense. If you've asked for an increase in this budget of an extra 10 hours per week, then you should assume the overtime's going down and your budget number in this budget for overtime should go down. It right. looks like you're carrying the amount for the extra 10 hours, plus you're carrying the overtime at the same number, which I think is what Mr. Talbot's concern and question is. And I'm not sure we got a good answer to that. So can someone yeah, the, the right. overtime the overtime from 20 to 21 is staying flat at 45,000. Yes. Correct. So there is there is no, you know, there is no offset for the extra 10 hours of the electrician, at least that comes from the overtime line item because that's remaining constant. That's what, I think that's what the, we're trying to get across yeah. here is that you're asking for 10 hours on one and side I, to increase the electrician. <laughs> we're looking for an offset in the overtime column, but yet that's staying flat. Sean, I think maybe this is something that you yep. can go back and we can get an update next uh, next meeting uh, once you've had a yeah, chance. Yeah, we can. I 
with this issue. I certainly understand the, the the point being made for sure, and I think that there should be an offset in overtime if that's the uh, expressed desire of the increased hours in the other positions. So uh, hopefully we can find some savings in overtime there. Hey, Dave. I had a question. Yeah. Oh, excuse uh, me. No, I, I'm sorry, Tim. I was just going to make, I know Mr. Bowery mentioned it, this is a separate budget and doesn't necessarily tie into the mill rate, but ties into the fee that's charged to our residents and our businesses. Right. Uh, while saying that, though, we're still under the same difficult times. And yep. I personally would not be looking for $1 increase in any of those fees in this mm -hmm. environment. So we're going to need to have to look hard here and figure out, are we able to maintain? Or if not, to be honest with you, if we can cut enough out of this budget, maybe we can give a small reduction back. Yeah, so, that'd be great. You know, I just want people in the WPCA to understand where I'm coming from at this. It's just because it doesn't tie directly to the mill rate doesn't mean we're not taking a hard look at this budget relative to where we all are uh, during this pandemic. So uh, I just want to make that statement. Yeah. And mine was a follow on to the, um, the shared the, ser the shared services of a new town engineer uh, at 50%, I believe that's how I heard that. And I wondered uh, the strategy behind that, if, if it's in fact a 50-50 operation. I know it would have been perhaps even more than that uh, when they were building the plant, but I didn't know if that was, um, you know, how, how that was uh, strategized and thought out. I just like, I know we're not talking about the position per se, but it's half, it's a big increase in the mm -hmm. WPCD budget. Any thoughts on that, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Town Manager? Sure. Or Walter? You want me to take that? Yeah, I mean, I can certainly speak. I mean, historically, those, uh, you know, that position has been split between the WPCD and, and the town. Um, okay. At, at, again, at reduced hours. So that's all, that's, we've maintained the same 50 50 split that's been there for years. Um, what what we are, I mean, the town engineer is staffed at the WPCD, um, uh, and also uh, and again provides a lot of oversight and, and support there to the to the department. Um, so yeah, the the proposal here was to keep the same arrangement we had before, but to increase the hours back, uh, recognizing uh, that it's going to be difficult to to fill that position with with uh, kind of a replica of what we had with uh, with Walt. Uh, and his availability and experience. So that was the original proposal. Okay, I appreciate that, Sean. I had forgotten that that was a 50-50 split. I just ignored that, I guess, in previous budget and hadn't thought much about it. Thank sure. You. Yeah, you can see it if you're on page 127. Uh, again, it, because it's no longer being proposed as a part-time position, you can see where the town engineer was in the 5103 line at 12224 to share. Uh, so as part of the... Uh, increase up there in the full-time line, uh, there's an offsetting decrease that would be zeroed out, hence the town manager adjustment down. Okay. Uh, this was a proposal I made at the at the manager level, so that's why you're seeing it there as an adjustment. I made this recommendation after the budgets were submitted to me. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Barui, can I? Uh, yes, sure, Mr. Tom. Again? Um, Sean, then uh, can we jump to page 131? Um, Yep. Line items 5706 and 5709, and, and believe me, I will never, ever argue with you giving us back uh, $585,000, um, but was just looking for some context around the reduction in pensions and then debt service, which I assume is the, is the, um, is the plant, but just want to hear it from you. You know, um, so I, I'd have to let Jim take the pension question. I think I know with debt service, you'll find uh, if we I hate to flip back between the books, but the uh, the the horizontal um, use of debt service reserve chart that I've kind of pointed to many times in the past. Uh, you'll recall there was that drawdown over three years, uh, specifically from right. the Department of Corrections uh, usage. So that delta is the reduction in how much we're using. Um, from that, uh, appropriating from that uh, fund balance, if you will. So it shows up as a reduction in expenditures um, because we are, are spending less, uh, so to speak, from, from that reserve. So um, Jim, you wanna jump in and clarify that? Is Jim on this, where would Jim go? Yeah, I might. Jim, you're muted, I think. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, could you repeat the question on the pension? It's um, page 131. Um, it's line item 5706, the, 
the pensions goes from um, from a budget of 108 in oh I can I can take that sorry Peter I, I was yeah Peter actually you got to look a little farther farther down below at um, 5720 the town pension line uh, when we go into the benefits okay. you'll see that what we've done is we've spiked out because we wanted to see uh, how much uh, we were for the various pension funds we wanted to be able to match the arc to numbers in the budget so I I added some lines this year if you go to the the, the main pension line and the, and the other okay. part of the budget yep. so translating that forward 5720 had to be created brand new so that's just a shift really from 5706 to 5720 a brand new account um, it makes more sense when you see it with all the other pensions police and general government and everything else right. um, so it's, but yeah, then so I don't know it's Jim actually going that line item is actually going up about nine grand then uh, from 108 to about 117, exactly about nine grand. Okay. That's, That's correct. correct. I think it'll be helpful to have that historic as we start to bend the curve on some of these pension funds. I think it'll be helpful to have those broken out before we always lump them into one big line, and it was hard to yeah, tell. Yeah, no, that's uh, at a glance. Um, but with respect to debt service, Jim, just correct me if I'm wrong. That that difference and the reason we have that large, almost five hundred thousand dollar decrease, uh, ties back to the debt service reserve. Um, uh, plan use of reserves, correct? Oh, yes. Sean, I apologize. I'm have I have a bad connection tonight, and I've been kind of going in and out, um, and I missed what what you just said. Okay, can you if you can hear me now? We're we're yeah. just uh, about fifty seven oh nine debt service. Uh, the reduction there of the four hundred seventy seven thousand. Uh, again, I believe that's tied back to the use of debt service reserve, uh, specifically the Department of Corrections element. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank correct. We'll go ahead. And, and if I could just add, I, I just uh, digress for a minute, uh, getting back to the oil. Uh, we are locked in for this fiscal uh, year 21 uh, at $1.87. And we probably did that back in the fall. Um, you know, probably had we known uh, the COVID situation was going to arise, we you know we obviously probably could do a little better with that pricing now. But we are locked in for fiscal 21 at a dollar 87. Um, I do know there were transitions to the 40,000 that was budgeted for oil uh, in uh, fiscal 20. Uh, the prior year uh, was in that that range, and I know there were some transitions going on with the when the new plant came online. So there wasn't a lot of history with the operation at that point. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know as if they necessarily budgeted that low. It was based on the history they had at the time uh, uh, going into that new operation. I don't think they had a good handle on how much oil they would use. Uh, what were we locked in last time, last year? You know, uh, I, I will check that. Right. I, uh, I think we've had some pretty good pricing in the last few years, so I would expect it's probably pretty comparable to that. Okay. But uh, I'll try to check that before the meeting's over. Thank you. Yep. All right. and Jim, yes, Walter. Yeah, Jim, just correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the, the significant difference in the debt service is in the, for a couple of years there, we were basically paying down the construction interest on the water pollution control plant uh, loan from DEP. Um, basically, I think it was arranged so that we, we paid off the construction interest and the rest of it was amortized over 20 years. So we kind of took that big hit in a couple of years and then it's decreased. So this is a decrease that'll be going forward. It'll stay at the lower level. I believe so, Jim. Maybe you can confirm yeah, that. But you know, it should be a, a state, you know, a straight payment going forward. Oh, Jim looks like you. Oh, yeah. Looks I'm, like we're having I, I technical really problems with Jim. Really bad because every time I'm ready to say something, my screen blanks out. So, um, uh, I, I I can tell you that the the WPCD fund has has been. Uh, providing additional resources in recent years. Hmm. 
the new uh, the new plant upgrade. And I'm hoping everybody can hear me because my I keep uh, well, we miss a lot of what you said. Yeah, you know what? Maybe Sean can give us an update afterward. We we didn't hear anything you had to say. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll connect. I um again just back to the other book, and uh, not to, to belabor, but the well, Sean, page one twenty nine. Jump in here for a minute, Sean. If you can get that debt service yeah. scheduled to us, because something doesn't sound right that what Walt just said. I, I I'm not following that. So I'm not saying he's wrong, but I just not following it. So I'd like to get a schedule to show this to us. Sure. And again, I think the the, the other schedule that we have in, in the other book on page 129 showing the debt service analysis, that's the other piece that um, uh, is connected back to this. That last year we used some of fund balance and uh, the DOC settlement uh, to, and this year we're just out of the out of the fund. They're they're spending less towards um, because of the plan drawdown uh, on the uh, debt service payment. So, um, but yeah, we'll 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 get some. Uh, some additional information there for you that to explain. But if I could add, Sean, do, do we not have that 2% clean water money and comes to a balloon payment so the first two years cost you more? Or or is it delayed a few years and then you have the, the bulk up in payments? There's there's some reason that I think the debt has gone down based on the loan structure from where the money came from. So I, I think Walt was kind of on target there from my recollection. Yeah. but. Okay. Well, but our, but our yeah, debt well, is actually going to be going up because we, we really don't have a lot of money left in our smoothing account or our, our Well, reserve. that's true. Right, that's true. I just want to make sure, I guess my point is, and I, I preface it by saying that, you know, I'm not sure Walt was wrong, but for me, I'd like a schedule on everything so I can go through this, Sean, and make sure I understand. Yep. Okay. We have been smoothing this spike out with our reserve dollars in the past. And I know we're running out of those dollars, and I just want to see what that implication is going to be. Sure. And again, I think even in the immediate term, if folks want to see it right now in the other book on 129, I can show you the 470,000. It's right on. It's it's between the WPCD fund balance line and the DOC settlement column on page 129. Um, you'll see that. Yeah, in the uh, in the in the now bigger book, the vertical one. And uh, and yeah, I mean, I'm certainly going to validate all this again with Jim, but I know we talked about this at least. Yeah, month I'm or two following ago. you now, and I'm hoping that. And, I and uh, you'll see there, Rob, that uh, in 20 fiscal 20, the current year, DOC settlement, we were using $575,000. Um, this year in this budget, that's 203607. But last year, we also used 100,000 of WPCD fund balance. If you see about two columns over to the left. Yep. So, Jim, I don't know if you have a better connection now if you want to jump in, but I know that that delta is about 470,000, give or take. And I think that's the, the less that has to be appropriated uh, from within the WPC gun. And that is, PCD I agree, that is the delta. And, and otherwise, the, the Water Pollution Control Fund is, uh, their debt service is normally stable, relatively speaking, because it's paying down debt service on a number of the pump stations. But but these all right. This is frustrating. I think maybe um, we can, um, Sean. Maybe we can get you to you know give us a yeah. We'll send it out later. We can what, move on. Sean, unless... if you look at the revised net debt numbers, they're going up. Mm -hmm. The town's total debt. Right. Yeah, of course. Right. Less reserve. I, I understand that, Tim, but I guess we're, 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 what we're using, we're, we've lost, what, $375,000 roughly? Yeah. And uh, four seven, uh, yeah, between that and you. Yeah, 100. Right. right. And, and I guess our net, our net debt, net debt is going up about $350,000. So again, I may sound stupid, but because I haven't seen it yet, but where's the big reduction? So it's a reduction in how much we're, the general fund is able to rely on the WPCB's contribution, right? There's, a, there's, there's less being, the net debt, right, is going up as 
the amount from this source. This source at the moment is the WPCB fund, which is what the BOC settlement and the fund balance columns are. But I think you're right. Maybe we can get a, a kind of a memo explanation from Jim because I'm sure he's itching to explain it, but it, technology is not working there. But uh, this is what it ties back to, and I know it, it works with the schedule. So uh, we will certainly share those schedules and make sure we have a quick summary we can send out to everybody so we, we can uh, all be comfortable with it. Yeah, because because the big issue for me is is that the revised net debt numbers are going to be going up a fair amount from six six million to six nine million to seven seven million eight six million. Some of that is a result of the fact that we don't have this reserve account to offset it. But uh, I think right. that's the bigger picture issue. Rob, that's I, the impact correct. So go ahead, Jim. Yeah, Rob, I agree, and I apologize. I, I uh, this is very frustrating with my technology here, but uh, the, the general fund is absolutely increasing and there should be a corresponding decrease in the WPCD fund going forward. And I'll try to prepare the, the schedule on 129 is just the general fund piece. And I think if I show you the corresponding WPCD uh, analysis, it, it would help understand uh, the big picture of what's going on on both funds. Yeah, because I think it's important, again, unless yeah. I'm missing something, I think it's it's a little misleading to be showing yeah. one form that we're dropping debt service significantly when in reality, yeah. in reality, our debt service is going up relative to that plan. Exactly. So I don't want people to think that uh, our debt service is going down significantly yeah. when it's not. Yeah, we really should have not only this general fund analysis, but... <laughs> we keep losing them. Um, yeah, Rob, I, mean, I think you're right. There, there's a good way we can continue to show more information here. But yeah, the short version is, I think, what you're saying, which is that 1.7 million that you that we were paying out of the WPCD, that that piece, um, part of when you're appropriating from fund balance for that year, you are spending more. Their, their sort of baseline debt, if you will, would be lower, $1 million, 1.2. Um, that we've been drawing from fund balance or using that Department of Corrections settlement, that, that means the amount we were contributing was was 1.7 million like you'll see there in the actuals for 19. So that has the effect of looking like a, a decrease because it's less appropriated from one year to the next. And what we're saying is that less is being appropriated from WPCD to pay the debt that is in the general uh, expenses. But as we heard at the very first budget session, debt is going up overall $325,000. It's just for this specific department because it's a fund balance, it's an enterprise fund, it's separate in the way of the accounting. But the message is that yes, it may be a little bit less that we're taking here because there's less reserves to take from, but debt service is going up in town and it's going up over $300,000 overall. Correct. Okay, but That's right now we're concentrating on this department's budget. And uh, uh, I, I know they all tie together, but uh, let's continue on if we have more questions on the WPCD um, other than what we're going to get in a summary and information uh, to follow. And okay. I said, we have a presentation. I can't see hands. So if anybody has a, a question or whatever, they can speak up or we can move on to other parts of public works. I think, I think I think Rob, Rob is talking. To jump in, he's on mute. Oh, there you, there you, there you, there you go. go, Rob. There you are. Sorry about that, guys. And I, I don't mean to dominate here, but if no one else has a question, I made this general statement in the budget in the past, and I'll make it here too. I see our insurance line item in this budget is going up a little over eleven percent. And I know insurances are tough. I know personally with my business insurances, they've been going up as well. But I made the statement, I think, earlier in our budget process that we seem to be getting hit pretty hard on insurances, and it might be time to make sure we're taking a hard look at, at our insurances. We pay a ton as a pound, and I just want to make sure that our provider is just not kind of sitting on their hands and not every year making sure the taxpayers are getting the best bang for their buck relative to insurance. This seems to just continue to go up, and I know in my personal insurance, unless you hold them accountable, you know, they're, they just gradually kind of work their way up and nobody pays attention. And so this is too big of a line item throughout the town budget for us to ignore. So I, I just want to make that statement.
No response. No. <laughs> I can certainly respond. I mean, yeah, abs absolutely. I mean, I know that we're, uh, you know, we've been having communications with our broker and uh, and trying to make sure as they're shopping our policies to that we're getting the best uh, best bang for the buck for sure. But. Um, so yeah, is the 11 percent what's going on in the marketplace? I mean, it, it, if somebody in the department can start answering these questions. All right, is anyone else on the line? Jim, are you there too? John, can you hear me? Now I can hear you, Jim. Okay. Yeah, now, the, uh, we're still waiting to hear from our, our, our agent uh, regarding uh, the final rates for this year. Uh, and, and, and every year we typically don't get that information till the, till the nth hour. So I'm hoping that those increases that were projected are indeed less. But, but Jim, I guess my point is we're going to the same provider year in and year out, correct? I think well, he faded out again. They, they have... Oh, good. I just want to make sure whoever our consultant is that manages our insurances throughout the town, particularly now, is driving a hard bargain on the, in the market for us. These things need to crop up, you know, pretty quickly, and it's a big part of our budget. And I just want to make sure that we're not sitting on our hands here, and our consultant is not getting us the best deal. Okay. Robin, you're, you're talking about. 5702 on page 131. Uh, yeah, let me go back to the book, Peter. I believe so. 5701. Uh, yeah. It's going up a little over 11%. But I think I had mentioned this earlier, uh, Peter, in, oh, in another right. budget conversation. It's just, you know, insurance has just seemed to be going up. And it happens to all of us. I mean, we all see it. But we want to make sure that we're checking the market as aggressively as we can so that we can look the taxpayers in the eye and say, yeah, it's going up, it's going up 11%, but it still is the best deal on the market. That's all I'm asking. And, and to Rob's point, I, I guess to Rob's point, I would glean that we've probably been using the same agent, quote unquote, for a long time, uh, and they shop a market, or is it different with municipal? I, I know we've been using the same agent per se group, but um, I mean, when, when did we put out an RFP for that uh, last time? You know, those are open questions that, you know, can, you can get back to us on. But that, I think, is really to Rob's point, how, how we're letting them shop it. But how often have we shopped an agent? Correct. Thank you, Tim. All as right, Jim, I know you switched offices there. Do you want to answer that for us? Because I know you, you work with our agent there on shopping it. Yeah, and again, uh, I know that they are shopping some of these insurances out. Uh, I have been, the last few weeks, I've been filling out applications for a number of insurance companies. So again, I'm hoping to hear. It's definitely Jim. Yeah, he switched computers and he's still not coming in. No matter yeah. it, must be, it, must be, it must be me. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I know they have been shopping this stuff. This was a tough year. They, they, they were projecting large increases uh, this year. And I know they're doing everything they can to hopefully come up with some better rates for us. Mr. Barry? Yes, Mr. Walsh? I, I had one other question, because it's going back to, I know with the oil, uh, because they said it was a new plant and they were just trying to figure it out, but. I also noticed the electric bill, uh, what they appropriated was 398,000 and what they actually used was 484,000, yet we're, uh, we're asking for 398 again. So, I mean, if it's a new building and, and they're still trying to figure out what is what, why are we, if we went $85,000 over the appropriated budget last year, um, was there something unusual that used up a lot of electricity or are we going to go over again this year? I think Walt, uh, Walter, are you on this still? Because I know if you can unmute, this is, this is related to those, I think, ZREC credits that we were working with last year. 
Yeah, I mean, well, two things. I mean, the um, the 484 is from fiscal year 19. Actually, for, for fiscal year 20, it's estimated to use 398. I'm muting this year. And that's what they're carrying for, you know, fiscal year 21. So really the 398 is, is a 0% increase over what they're currently used. That was- Yeah, in, last, 2019, last we, in 2019, we used 484. Right. Okay, so what, what that ties to, and it gets a little bit complicated, but um, the solar at the landfill, we get virtual net metering credits that we can apply to five different uh, buildings in town. And so actually the water pollution control plant is a recipient of, of a large chunk of those. So that's where we're that's where you're seeing that big drop is that so, so we should be okay at the 398 based on that. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yes. Right. So we're that, we're getting that, finally that the benefit very, for the solar farm. Right. That's a you know a, a very definite effect. And and not to it's a minor point, but you know, one thing just uh, Rob on the insurance and it it uh, although it's going up, um, we did we were able to knock, I think it was about $6,000 off uh, what it should have been when we got the flood dike certified so that we no longer had to pay flood insurance for, for uh, uh, several of the buildings inside the dike. Thank you for the clarification. Are there other questions with regard to Water Pollution Control Department? All right, so we will get more information, some clarification on some of these that uh, uh, to help us understand a little more clearly. Let's move on now with um, with the presentation and we can uh, close out WPCD and move on to the rest of the public works. Sure, thank you. Can you folks hear me? Yes, we can, George. Okay, all right, great. I, I was hoping I wasn't having the same problem Jim was with the town Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> Don't let okay, him get so we're, your we're moving to yeah correct correct <laughs> um, we'll move into the uh, the public works proper and this is a, a very similar um, a very similar kind of plucking of items that changed dramatically more than a few percent um, in in from last year's budget to the rec requested budget this year um, again that first column that says actual please read that as the appropriation from last year, uh, not the actual spent. And we'll clean that up on the next go around. Um, so the, the first few lines, administration and engineering are just combining, that's, that's that combination of positions between the town engineer and the capital projects manager. There's, there's money moving from um, one entity to another. And uh, again, the, the town engineer was proposed to be funded half at the WPCD, half through Public Works. The Capital Projects Manager was proposed to be funded half through the Board of Ed and half through Public Works. So that's kind of the, um, how you see those numbers move around there a little bit. Um, and I'll, I'll continue and please, um, there's two slides of this, so please either ask questions or at the end of the second slide, I'll give you a chance to speak to whatever you like. Are you going in and out again? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Um, so we moved down to highway sidewalks and drainage 5204 auto equipment. That dropped a little bit. We just have some reduced historical costs. The, the equipment is uh, not requiring so many supplies and maintenance, um, which has been good. 5401 consultants increased dramatically. Uh, unfortunately, that's the um, where we, we're trying to disconnect from many of the storms, the existing storm systems and, and uh, less impact to the environment. Um, so we have, we have, we need um, more firepower from consultants to, to get us through that, uh, through all the state hurdles that we've got to jump through each year. Um, 5403 auto equipment, again, reduced historical costs, small, in the grand scheme of things, small drop, but it is a drop. And then uh, other is, uh, the RW fees, this is the, the, the fee that we pay for the water in the mains throughout town, um, which is a, a large number, um, eight, over $8,000. 
Right now, RWA is now projecting an increase as of July 1. We get word of that just uh, literally in the last 24 hours. Um, and uh, But it, it's not been uncommon for them new year to, to do something different too. And their numbers have changed. Um, some years zero and other years, it's been an 8% increase a, a few times. So we just carried that as kind of a happy medium, if you will. Um, next slide, sir. Went through. There's a lag. When I press the button, it takes about 10 okay. seconds for the AI to <laughs> sure. change for sure. some reason. Though. Yeah. Something's happening tonight. We never got to the moon. It's, um, all right, snow and ice. Uh, we, we have snow's budgets mainly, mainly decreases um, that are reflecting some fuel fuel uh, reductions um, and the we did use some more parts for the for the equipment this uh, we're projecting this year um, but many other things decreased we had some salt price reductions the the tonnage the pr price per ton has decreased since last year which is great and then gas and diesel we are in a in a contract um, and we're just we're just showing some reduced usage and reduced prices from that um, solid waste, this is unfortunately where we go the wrong way. 5409 uh, is up by 7%. So that's a, uh, I have another slide for that later in the presentation, but that's the, we have a contract increase of 3% this coming year. And we're, our tipping fee is going to increase dramatically. And I'll, I'll show you that at the next slide, or we can talk about it at your pleasure. Um, and then on the grounds, again, these are, small dollar increases, but just wanted to flag them so everybody knows gas and diesel went up some, just some increased fuel usage uh, running around, taking care of the, the grounds, kind of historical costs. Um, our telephone line went up, which has to do with some of the GPS units and the emergency phones that we have on the trail. And then um, we had a decrease in the Jarvis Street restrooms. We're doing more of the maintenance in-house that's the Clivus units, the composting toilets. So we had a, a reduction there that we um, we offered up from last year's budget to this year's budget. So that takes care of the, the large, what I would consider the, the large changes in the budgets uh, for public works. And um, we can take questions at that point or I can go into public properties and do the same thing. Mr. Barry? Yes, Mr. Ars. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Nowatney. Um, regarding the snow and ice control budget, um, I'm trying to ascertain this, this number that you have, can you, all right, that's the right screen. Is that what was budgeted or what was actually spent? Cause I can't that's, tell. That's the appropriation from last year. Okay. Um, so the, the actual is a, again, the appropriation, not, not the actual spent. Okay. Right. So I'm, I'm looking at it in the book and, um, I'm just trying to compare. Obviously we had a very mild winter. So I'm Correct. assuming we must have some significant savings, I would imagine, in this line item based on what we spent. So can you let us know what that is? And then I'd love to know what we're using in a carry for that for this budget. Sure. In this in the snow and ice, uh, and this will come up in another slide, but it's this is a fine time to do it. Um, we're projecting an eighty-eight thousand dollars savings in the budget from this past winter. So okay. that that was offered up as part of the, there's a, about a $400,000 um, re proposed reduction in the public works budget for this fiscal year we're in, and 88,000 of it is coming from snow and ice. Gotcha. Thank you, George, because I think it's sure. important because obviously the taxpayers are watching and we did have those actual savings and we're carrying those savings forward. So I appreciate a it. Absolutely. We're, we're happy to offer that yeah. back and uh, that, that's a that's good for everybody, I would say. It, it is, and I just want to make sure the taxpayers understand that. I think it's important to note it. So thank you. Sure. I, I had a question. If I could just sure. jump in real. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Sean. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No. I do just a, a reminder, maybe for those watching at home too, that uh, again, these these budgets were developed in January and February. The budget books were produced at the end of February. Uh, so some of the estimates you see, particularly snow and ice, as we weren't quite through winter the way we are now in May, uh, not anticipating we'd still be doing the budget kind of as late as we are given what's happened. But um, that's why, as George said, you won't see that 88 expressly in these books that are now a couple of months old. 
uh, but you have seen that in the uh, in the projected savings for the current fiscal year we've talked about. So. so, Sean, to be clear, are you using that eighty-eight thousand dollars as part of the savings that you're carrying forward to our budget this year? As we're we're trying to get you to carry some forward some of it, that's what you're using it for. You're not you're not reducing. Well, yeah, you're reducing this year's budget effectively. Right. Off, but in George's line item. Let me back up. I guess I'm not being very clear. In George's line item for ice and snow, he probably has the higher amount, but you're bringing the $88,000 of savings into our general budget reductions that you've been providing to us over the past few weeks. Is that correct? That's correct. Because I think mechanically what's going to happen is that money is going to get added to surplus into the general fund surplus as, as additional surplus over what we've projected and then built in as revenue into next year's budget so that he still budgets next to need in snow and ice. I hope we have another mild winter, um, but we're not going to be reducing those line items for next year in any way. So we can still compare apples to apples. Got it. I, and, that, and that certainly, in my opinion, is the right way to do it. I just wanted to be clear as to how we're handling it. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, I had a question for George and, and perhaps, uh, and it doesn't have to do with snow and ice, but it may be a uh, discussion for after it had to do with, um, the administration line and the engineering line uh, 5102 and 03. Um, I didn't understand fully the uh, increased decrease language. Um, I, I get the capital project proposed um, and then moves from engineering, but there's a there's a line item for, for full-time engineer and then it moves down to the next line where it says the engineer is gonna be less than last year. How, how, how are you going to figure that one out for us? So we actually know the cost of the position. You don't have to answer that now, but I'm going to need to see that. And I guess it's probably somewhere, but I know that's a discussion maybe for yeah. a different day. Sure. We'll I, I can, to I can jump in a little bit there, Tim. Uh, I can, I can jump in just a little on that. It, the, the idea was that the capital projects manager position is most appropriately housed for future use. If it's approved by the council as part of this budget, it should be in administration. Um, and so that position has been pulled out of the engineering division. Uh, so what you're seeing on page 113 is the creation of the split, right? That's the 50% with Board of Ed capital project. So the, I increased the Board of Ed's budget by 42,893, the same as you're seeing that number added here to 5102, hope that makes sense. And then you're seeing it remove that position, the assistant town engineer, which is the individual's current title. Um, you should see that as both in the detail, 75,402, 403, I think there's a rounding, uh, but you'll see that that's basically eliminated on page 115 at the top. So for my general edification, I wanna see eventually, um, what the cost of the town engineer is, because I think that's it. That is the broader, yep. that is the broader question for all of us to absorb fully, um, and sure. uh, and the rest, and and the same with any of these other shared split up department costs. Yep. Thanks. Sure. Definitely. Are there other council members' questions on public works? I can't see, unfortunately, people. So uh, I have just a presentation. So. I have a question, David. Yes, yes, Jim. Councilman Jenks. Hey, George. Um, a quick question. This maybe isn't for maybe isn't for a budget discussion, but um, as far as the mechanics we had, so so we do all the maintenance to our vehicles ourselves. Is that correct? Largely, the 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 only major vehicles that we don't maintain in house are the, the fire trucks themselves. The, sure. The the apparatus, I would say, um, but pretty much Board of Ed the the kind of uh, commuter fire vehicles, I would say, or the, the, the chief's vehicle and, and those folks, um, the police vehicles largely and uh, board of ed and senior center and public works that are, right. are done in house. So we have, we have the labor, we have the tools and the facilities. So have we ever considered um, sort of doing that work, offering that work to other towns in our area if, if they need sort of uh, uh, you know, additional mechanic services for their own fleets? 
we uh, we haven't we, in, in years uh, in years past we've um, we've actually requested another mechanic uh, because we're we're pretty well tapped out at this point. They do um, they do probably 700 services of vehicles with all the uh, multiple services you have to do to these vehicles a year. So it's a it, it's a large undertaking. And um, for four, we actually have a fleet manager who's a who becomes a a working mechanic at least half the time, and then three three mechanics themselves. Oh, okay, so we, we don't really have the bandwidth to do more. Correct, correct. Okay. We're kind of we're kind of at our max, I would say, right now. Okay, I was wondering if there was a possible sort of you know, profitable relationship we could get into as far as offering these services to other towns, or even you know offering some kind of mechanic services to the general public on a limited basis or something. But um, sounds like that's not an opportunity at the moment. Correct. If um, I, I can look at that in light of a, I, I'm sure nobody wants to talk about it, but another mechanics position, if it would pay for itself or something, we could we could look at that that angle. Right. 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 Okay. Are there other council members' questions? I actually have one, if I could. On page 123, uh, under personnel for grounds, it looks as though uh, the town manager made reduction of 62,000. Is that because there was an additional maintainer requested or groundskeeper requested and then it was uh, uh, denied so that we're keeping with the same number? That That's correct. That's correct. In, in our, oh. yep. in our original, in the original budget, I had requested a, an additional groundskeeper and um, I could go through some of the reasons for that uh, later in the presentation or, or not. <laughs> At your pleasure. Yeah, probably not much of a year for uh, increases like that. Correct, correct. I, I understand that. Are there other questions? Council members have other questions? I'll, I'll take one if you're offering. Yes, Mr. Talbot. <laughs> um, up one page from where uh, we just were then, 122. Um, and it's just more of a, uh, a clarification, George, from a uh, flashback to my... Uh, my old solid waste days. Help me with the, the tipping fee. I know that that's going up for recycling, but I thought there was something about capping that as part of our um, renewed contract. I thought there was a way that we were going to cap that, that tipping fee for recycling so it didn't go too out of whack. That, that's correct, Councilman. Um, and correct. The, the tipping fee we're talking about is... Uh, is the solid waste, so it's not the the recycling. Okay. Uh, but to your to your question, the the way the contract was structured for recycling, anything over sixty five dollars, we are capped at thirty dollars of it. And right now, I think uh, AJ is paying eighty something dollars to dispose of recycling, of which we're paying thirty dollars of it every month. Um, but the it comes later in the presentation. But our our current tipping fee for solid waste. Is about sixty nine dollars and forty cents in right in that ballpark. Um, we dispose of about seventy one hundred tons of solid waste, so it's a large number when you do the math. Um, and that tipping fee is is scheduled. It could go up. I, I projected eighty dollars a ton um, because we're we have to uh, kind of true up our our figures with the with the five member town board. Um, and it could go as high. Mr. Kimball will explain. It could go ninety or hundred dollars potentially, uh, depending on how that goes. Yeah. So I have an update on this from we the policy board for Wallingford Solid Waste uh, uh, Committee, which is uh, consists of five towns: uh, Hamden, uh, Meriden, uh, Cheshire, Wallingford, and North Haven. Uh, all we each are represented there. Um, and we had a executive session meeting yesterday. There's some updates that I'll have to give the council in executive session, but we had a meeting yesterday afternoon. Um, and the short version though, is there the true up that George is speaking of, uh, the way the rates work for the, the current um, manager, the company that manages the, the actual transfer station, uh, we're set under a contract formerly with Covanta now with a company called Country uh, Disposal. And the, the uh, increases are baked in, except that every few years, I believe every five years, there's a true up where you do a market reference um, analysis, uh, local market average. And that process is going on and those negotiations are going on. And we had an update yesterday um, 
in terms of whether we're going to be closer to the 80 or high 80s uh, that we're now projecting uh, or as high as $100 uh, a ton as we're seeing in the marketplace. So we know the $69 is uh, probably never to come back again in the, in the short term. Uh, we thought in preparing this budget that going up to $80 a ton, which is still a huge increase, uh, was going to be enough. Currently, I know uh, while there's been issues at that plant and they had to close temporarily due to COVID, um, the AJ has been able to pay $88 to send it to a different plant in Waterbury, which makes me think that our 80 to 88 you know, target range may not be unreasonable. Um, but certainly we would need to reevaluate some of our other options if we were forced uh, to look at $100 a ton or more. Uh, and for Cheshire, that might not be um, that may not might not be sticking with this exact arrangement we have right now. So there's a lot of discussion in there in happening in real time that we're going to need to have on on tip fees for next year. In so in it, connection, oh, oh, go ahead, Peter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tim. I just wanted to follow up while it's, sure. while it's still fresh. Then, um, so in in 5409, what what uh, percentage of that input or how much of the loan twenty is for the solid waste tip fee? So, in tip, the tip fee there, you see, um, where is that? The five hundred and sixty-eight. Yep. Thousand. Um, so again, as as George was saying, we budgeted an increase of about ten dollars of of the tip fee, which is about a seventy thousand, uh, seventy-one, seventy-two thousand dollars, because we take about seventy-one hundred dollars, seventy-one hundred tons of trash a year from from residents. Um, the other piece I would add to that that's that's also happening very much in real time over recent weeks is, as you can imagine, uh, residential solid waste uh, tonnage is spiking as everyone is home um, and commercial is going down. Well, on the municipal side, we only pay for the residential collection. Um, we're still getting some of those numbers and those counts in weekly, but um, depending on how long this goes, I know we're talking fiscal 21 here, so hopefully in July things are starting to turn a little bit but uh, recently we've seen not only the tip fee increase and some associated with the closure temporary closure of that of our, the transfer station but the tonnage itself is up as people are not at the office and therefore throwing things out things that are developed in commercial waste some of it is actually flowing through the residential stream so you're you're also saying though that that this um, this figure of plus 120, could actually be about plus 260 if the tip fee went up to $100 a ton. If it went to 100, yes, it'd be about $140,000 increase, it's about 70,000 yeah. for every $10. Uh, I'm right now concerned that it, it might be $70,000 too low based on the way the market's gone over the last two months. Um, right. And now I'm still optimistic with some of these negotiations. And again, I think certainly whether it's uh, with the solid waste subcommittee based on the executive session I had yesterday, uh, there's some updates I could give, but I think both, really frankly, the whole council is going to want to uh, talk about some of the options we have there. So Thank more to you. come. The, the question I had had uh, for Sean regarding solid waste was just addressed by Sean, so I'm, I'm clear on that now. Basically, our tip fees are going to go up big time with COVID. Thank you. All right. Are there other questions? And you'll have to speak up because I see just the presentation. All right, then I guess we can continue on with David. The, David, it's yeah. Dave Velber. Good question oh, for you. Hi, Councilman. Yes. Yep, uh, George, and and maybe I'm missing it, and I want to find out. Uh, but I know it's a discussion we've had uh, uh, earlier, just uh, based on um, recycling and hazardous waste. And I just want to find where will that come in in this presentation? You know, talk about that at some point in time in the presentation. Uh, yeah, we've got a slide on a, that. I know. If you'll bear, David, I don't know. it sounds like George is cutting out, but there is a slide up coming on the on household house hazard away. Perfect. Thank you very much. I'll wait. I'll look forward to that. Thanks. Sure. And uh, if you can move right. to the next slide, Sean. Oh, sorry. All right. I clicked it. Hopefully, it's going through. Yep, it's it's there. So the next one is public properties, which is a under public works, but a separate part of the budget. Um, and I'll I'll go through this fairly quickly. But again, the that that column that says actual, please read that as as uh, the current appropriation. 
Um, so over time has gone up. We've had some call-ins for various building issues in the evenings, uh, which prompts a three and a half hour call-in at times. Um, so we we asked for another thousand dollars in that um, heating oil. We have increased usage. That again is a um, is a year by year uh, year by year um, metric. So we that could go up or down depending on what kind of winter we've got. Um, although we are under contract for heating oil for a, a fixed price. Um, water, we, we figured reduced usage based on historical data, which is part of that performance contract showing itself. Um, we, we've been using less in the buildings. Um, the building property account, 5404, there's a small reduction there, which was taken uh, to reduce some of the elective building projects that we, we have in the budget. Um, rentals and leases, and contract services, which are the last two rows, are based on our, uh, the result from the performance contract and the financing of the performance. So that's the, the major changes in public properties. And again, the overall budget went up by 0.22%. If there's no questions on that, we'll. Um, we have the next section of this is the capital budget. I know at this point the desire isn't to get too deep into the capital budget. There may be follow-on meetings about that, but we'll just give you a, a high-level view of, of what's being requested in the first two years, and then we'll we'll move on to some of the the COVID and wrap-up slides at the end. Um, so I'll ask Scott Hellier to take you away on this first one with the Water Pollution Control Division. Well, Scott, you still there? <laughs> if, if Scott's having a problem connecting, I, I can I'm, just take. I'm, you there? Uh, uh, Scott there? Or if not, I, I'll be happy to. Um, I think okay. I'm here. Okay, then go ahead. You can you can explain the, the pressure washer then. Okay, we've got a, a 2001 um, jet truck that we use for routine maintenance of our sewer jet lines. Um, truck goes out two or three times a week. We have a program where we go around and clean all our sewer lines and roughly in about a five year period, we clean the whole town. Um, it's a mandatory program through the DEP mandates we do. The bigger part of it is it's, a, it's an emergency truck. When there's blockages in the lines and things like that, we need to respond and clear them you know, in, in a timely fashion um, as best we can. So the one we have, like I said, is a 2001, it's almost 20 years old. Um, it's seen better days. The body is pretty much um, rusting off it. Um, we're still able to operate and do what we need to do, um, but we'd like to get it replaced. And Walter, if you want to add anything to it, go right ahead. Yeah, just, you know, like I say, stressing the point with uh, 120 miles of sewer, you know, basically this is out there <clears throat> cleaning about 24 miles of sewer a year in addition to, to the emergency blockages. So um, when you look at amortizing a, a truck over that length of time, it, it certainly makes uh, more sense than trying to, to contract for services uh, to, to do the same type of thing. Yep, yeah, and then in year two, um, there's a pickup truck to replace a, an existing uh, Ford Escape that, that the department has. Um, so we'll, we can move on. Uh, these are some pictures of the existing truck. And then um, we'll go right into public works. Uh, again, I won't go through all these individually, but this is year one. This is the request for year one, which I'll be happy to get into more detail with when we move into that phase of the budget later on uh, this year. And then uh, year, the next slide is year two, which again is, is a series of projects and vehicles uh, that we're requesting. And I'll be happy to get into as much detail as you like tonight or, or later on in the, uh, in the budget process as we go through the capital. If there's no, uh, 
no objection, I'll move on to, uh, we've been asked to give the actual paving costs uh, for various treatments. Um, so we, we pull that together and I, again, I won't spend a lot of time on the slide, but I know hot in place recycling was, was a, uh, uh, a hot topic last year. Um, and so this, this is just some, some of the costs that we use when we put together our paving program. And you can see mill and pave um, is, is the most expensive uh, by cost per mile. Um, hot in place is about a little, uh, little under half, a little more than half as expensive. And then uh, micro sealing, chip seal on down the line. So the, these are some of the, the costs we use when we, uh, we allocate the, the paving funding. So if we go to the next slide, Mr. this Park, is our paving. Oh, yes. yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Ars. Um, thank you, Mr. Nowatney. When will we have enough history behind us to determine whether these alternatives to a mill and pave are getting, are, we're getting the right return on our investment? I know they're cheaper and we're suggesting that the return on investment is there. They're cheaper and they're extending the life of these roads. Uh, when will we have enough to ascertain that? For sure, because I, I think, at least in my opinion, the jury is still out on some of these applications. I know, I know, we just did Higgins Road, and I drive Higgins Road every day, and I don't know, I'm not 100 percent comfortable that it's up to snuff. But anyway, I'm curious as to when we'll know if we really are better off doing some of these cheaper alternatives versus just a mill and pave. Some some of the cheaper alternatives are have a long well, they, they project a long life. So like hot in place. Could be eight to ten years somewhere in that range um, we just started last year and we don't have any coming up this year because we don't have the right characteristics of roads this year that lend itself to that uh, micro sealing we've had down for uh, four or five years now on cornwall and, and various roads and it's that's been a, a win we haven't had a lot to do there so that's certainly a win chip seal is a known quantity and and that's a a win uh, I, I understand folks aren't, aren't that jazzed about it, but for the money, it's you can get a lot of mileage for comparatively little cost. That, well, and it, it seems to me that we should be starting our own kind of matrix so that we can determine how it actually works here in Cheshire. I mean, it's great when somebody tells you this is what it's done elsewhere. But in reality, I think, I, I'm not suggesting we shouldn't do it, but since we're starting these projects and we have some history behind us, I hope we're doing a matrix on okay, chip seal, we thought we were gonna gain 10 years. And are we getting 10 years here in Cheshire by doing chip sealing or is it five years? So that we can create our own matrix and really determine really where is our biggest bang for the buck on this stuff. And, and so I'd like to see us do that and I hope you are doing it. Yeah, we, we absolutely are. That's part of that paving program that we maintain through the engineering department. Um, and Dan Bombero has done a great job uh, chasing that and Don Nolte as well. Um, but they, we, we have that all matrixed out and we, we know what to expect with many of these treatments. The only, the one that we don't have down very well is hot in place where we're relying on historical data because we, we just tried that last year. So, so what did you do on Higgins Road? Higgins, um, on Oak. That, that was the water main place. break though, right? Right. right I think on Higgins was the repair to the water line though. Correct. I'm yeah. Sorry. That was the RWA. No, I'm talking when you get to the top of the hill, right at the intersection of Ward, you basically went from Ward to North Brooks or to uh, Mountain Road with some right. kind of a process. I'm not uh, sure what you use. Yeah, it's a chip seal that goes down that hill. Okay. So we, we did hot in place on Oak, um, Oak and Wintergreen, which is a cul-de-sac off it. Um, which came out really well with a double double chip seal on top of it and a fog seal. Um, okay, so, it, so Higgins was just a chip seal. Correct. Yep. So just to follow up too, um, I would like to see what's on the agenda for um, paving projects and any of these projects for the next calendar year. Um, I, I think we need to take a hard look at these in light of where we are budgetary wise. Uh, we're all looking to cut the budget. Uh, we've got a lot of problems going on with the private sector, with people losing jobs and businesses not being open. Uh, this is an area for me 
that we may need to look at and see if we want to defer some of these pavings to save some dollars going into next year. So uh, I'd be interested to get sure. an update as to what's on the calendar for next year. And I want to take a look at what those roads look like. I know we have a rating system, but I'd like to have people look at those roads in addition to just what the rating system says. Sure, absolutely. And that's what you're seeing on the slide here. Um, this is the this is our proposed paving for this year with the the capital money that was budgeted last year. Um, so the yellow is the chip seal roads that we're proposing. Uh, many of them are double chip, which is kind of a better gives you a little more uh, less noisy driving surface, I would say. Um, and uh, and then the next slide is the actual mill and paved, um, which is in blue. These are the sections of roads. So there's about 5.7 miles of, of mill and pave. Um, our total we proposed at one about a million and a half dollars. We also we keep a little contingency, obviously, and we also usually budget anywhere between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars for crack sealing various roads throughout town. Usually we do that in the fall. So that, that's not shown in this one point five million dollars. I would make a suggestion with this that uh, we consider um, the maintenance afterwards when the chips are loose by the side of the road that I've had people tell me that they're hard to ride their bikes, they're uncomfortable to walk, especially if they have dogs and things like that, because maybe we don't clean them up as uh, uh, quickly or whatever, so that we watch that when we're doing it as well. It might be re perceived by the residents as a little uh, uh, more popular than it is. Sure, sure. Yeah, it, it can be a little dusty at times. And we, we definitely sweep afterwards. Uh, you have to let them lay and kind of work their way in a little bit. But we uh, definitely take that under advisement. And we'll, we'll sweep as often as we can when we do these chip seal roads. Yeah, because they work their way to the sides. And, yeah, that's uh, correct. That is and correct. they become yeah. piles and they're hard to ride your bike or they're hard to uh, even sometimes walk. They're a pain or the dogs are hard to, uh, uh, if you're walking a dog, we have a lot of dogs in town. Uh, those, those might be something that's part of this program to make it a little more popular if indeed it is worthwhile doing. Sure, sure. It's, yeah, without a doubt, it's the best bang for the buck that we have. It's, uh, it's, it's pennies on the dollar compared to mill and paving. So it preserves, preserves the road network uh, to allow us to get more life out of a given pavement. So, so George, I see Elm Street is on here between Wallingford Road and uh, Route 6870. That road really need repaving? It's the first thing I noticed, Rob. <laughs> we, yeah. we, we have it on there. It, the, the way some of these roads are grouped is that you, you wanna, when you have a larger road like Wallingford Road, um, that's, that's gonna be a portion of it's gonna be repaved. Um, we, it makes sense to do ancillary roads to that because otherwise you have to, if you do a short section of road at a later date, you, you have to pay to move the equipment to that short section of road, which really isn't economically a uh, smart move. So you, Elm Street, while it might be next year on uh, next year's list or the year after's list, it makes sense economically to do it now or else you pay a heavy price to to move so, the equipment. So you're saying that in our rating system, it's really not ready, but you're doing it anyway, because it's convenient. We do so many roads every year with contractors. I'm not buying the fact that if someone's got to move their equipment two streets over to do another street, that it should add a lot of cost. So that's kind of my point. It sounds like Elm Street wouldn't necessarily be on your priority list, but you're doing it because you're there. And that's the kind of situation I'm looking to avoid in light of where we are with the pandemic and trying to cut taxes. Sure, I mean we can we can do exactly the roads that are uh, that are the lowest rated. That's that's not a problem. It's just um, it it's uh, well just what I just what I said. But I, I certainly will take under your into advisement your uh, your point. <coughs> Ooh, all right. Um, I so, I hate really it. Oh, Mr. Relevant. Relevant. Town Hall needs to be repaved immediately. I don't. Well, it was the first thing I noticed, Rob. But uh, you know, I, I guess I didn't pay much attention to the Wallingford Road piece of it. So, but again, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pave that in a hurry. Me neither. Yeah. So, um, yep. I think Mr. Developer 
started asking a question. Yeah, no, and, and Rob, I agree with you. That's obviously a road to look at, but uh, right, it, I, I, see, I see what George's concern is, but I'm not sure that, you know, that road is a year or two away or even three years away. That says the cost of doing it now um, is, is worth that additional cost at this point, and we can deal with it later. George, one of the things that I noticed uh, was that, you know, despite last year, you, you, you made a comment that there are no streets that are on the list, which, which would sort of qualify or be in consideration for this hot, uh, you know, patch uh, system this year. Um, is that just because of the way the roads came up on your, your rating list or uh, you wanted to wait and see how, you know, give it a year's worth of, of view on what's happening? Or so is it just luck of the draw that nothing's coming up this year? Because uh, that's just my question to see how that plays out with the roads that were picked. Sure. Yeah. Um, thanks for thanks for asking that. That leads into a, a good discussion, Councilman. Uh, the, the a little of both. The, the roads when when you do hot in place, you need long straight roads just because the the train of vehicles they call it is. 60 feet long or, or better. And so as that moves down the road, it doesn't do well if you have curves. Many of these roads have curves or, or kind of obstructions that that would not lend itself to. Um, and the other piece of it is just what you said that we'd like to see, we'd like to give the roads that we did a few years to kind of weather before we go back into it and, uh, and, and commit to more mileage of, of doing that. We, we certainly don't want to uh, do something that, that can't be undone if, if it doesn't work well in Cheshire. I mean, I, obviously, I, I appreciate that. I'm just looking at, you know, from a cost perspective, obviously, you know, it can be a significant cost difference, but uh, I, we do, I guess we do want to take into consideration that if, if this doesn't work well and we do all these roads and we don't get the life we think we're going to get out of them, that we may have to be doing them sooner than we had hoped. But um, uh, so thank you very much. All right, are there other Mr. questions? David? Yes, Mr. Norris. Yeah, um, if Mr. Jaskot is still on here, I don't have uh, the background on what was being, how we were paying for these road projects in this year's or last year's capital budget, whether it was CNR and or was all of it going to be bonded. I think most of it was going to be bonded, I mean, was my recollection. I don't think there's any in CNR. Pretty much all the road projects are bonded, uh, Rob. Uh, okay. We rarely do anything with CNR unless it's a really, really small isolation project okay, so, they're pretty so much all bonded. Point, I guess if they're all being bonded are they being amortized over a 20-year term is that correct that's correct okay so if we were to peel some of these projects off depending on the dollar amount it might not be a big impact in our debt service anyway is that correct uh Yeah, I, I guess you know the impact would be over a twenty-year period. So if you look at it from that that standpoint, well, I guess my price. point is, if we found a project for a half a million dollars, the debt service on yeah. half a million dollars over twenty years at two point some odd percent, which is our borrowing rate, probably isn't that significant relative to our savings in the budget going forward. Correct. Correct. Okay. So I just want to be clear: if I'm looking at any of these road projects, all of them are going to be bonded. And we have to find something very significant in order for it to be meaningful in our uh, next year's budget, in my opinion. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jim. And keep in mind, we're going to be bonding, uh, you know, next next spring. So we won't see the, the debt service for that come on until, you know, the following fiscal year. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. All right. David. Yes, um, Mrs. Nichols. Well, just a curiosity, George, I understand that we have a rating system for the roads as to which are in more significant need for repair. How do you determine which method of repaving you're using on what roads? What What's the mechanism to decide whether it's a tip seal or it's um, any of the other options that we have? Sure, good question, thank you. Um, the the rating system, we, we've rated all the town roads from zero to 100, um, and they're, they're also categorized by their use. So um, a, a more of a through road, like a Higgins Road or a Cook Hill Road, has a, the, the rating has a much more of an impact than, say, a, a 
Berkshire Court or a, a small cul-de-sac that serves a limited number of houses, um, the, the system will kind of spit out the roads at us and give us a recommendation based on that use and their, their rating. But the idea is to try to do the lowest, the lowest cost treatment um, as much as you can without repaving it just to keep the good roads in good shape in other words that's that's what we're looking for so, so some of it comes from experience that we we make a call based on experience but a lot of it will come right out of that system and give you a, a list of roads based on their their current rating and how it's declined and how you can pick it back up and get many more years of life out of it for comparatively little money um, that being said we don't typically chip seal uh, cul-de-sacs because there's usually children out there playing in or near the road or have a basketball hoop set up or something like that at the cul-de-sac. So we, we try to stay out of the cul-de-sacs with any kind of chip seal and that, that limits what we can do in, in the cul-de-sac. Um, the good news is that they tend to last a lot longer because they have much lower traffic counts on them. I understand that. So to go back to that um, issue that we talked about with Elm Street and Wallingford Road, you indicated that there was a savings by keeping the roads that were contiguous that even though they may not be quite ready to be uh, uh, done, we do them at the same time. How do you then determine that if Ginny Hill Road is a through street on the way up the hill and I live on Barrights, which is a cul-de-sac, how do you determine if you're, if you're going to pave Jenny Hill Road, then I would assume you the cost would be better if you continue to pave Barrights Drive the same way. However, Barrights Drive may not require the same level of, of work that Jenny Hill. So how, how does that balance then? It, and how it's, can you justify that? <laughs> sure, it's, it, it's a little bit of Kentucky windage uh, because you the, the road, the through road obviously is going to get repaved and if your adjacent side roads are at a, a low enough rating then it, it makes sense to repave them there's a certain if you go below an 80 or somewhere in that range you're you, you're almost destined to repave the road someday you chip seal won't pick that road up and make it a, a better road it, there's just not enough good in the road if you will um so the the idea is like an elm is is lower down on the list but it, it makes sense to do it now because if we bring back the equipment just to that road um, to make the jump is gonna cost several thousand dollars by the, the company that does the paving. It's, uh, um, that's the best way I can explain it. If we, uh, if we do it with Wallingford Road, it, it just makes it, uh, th there's no cost for that, that um, to move the equipment. If, if, um, if we don't do it with Wallingford Road, we have to bring the equipment back and then move it to another road, which is going to cost us some money at that point, or cost the cost so the taxpayer some money. No matter what pro program you're doing, you're moving on this particular one that's still on the screen. You've got Mountain Road in Cornwall, and you've got Peck Lane, and you've got Sandbank, and you've got Wallingford Road. You're moving equipment to all of those different areas. And um, why would you not then do the roads that were all in the area of Pick One, Mountain and Road in Cornwall? Um, you know, how do you determine that? Sure, we we have to we we have to spread it over the entire town network, of course. So that, that's what what comes the the pricing of the roads how they're done is is by square yards, and the the more square yards you do up to a point, um, I don't, the cheaper it gets per square yard. Not necessarily overall cheaper, but the price per square yard is much less. That's why if you do an elm by itself, it doesn't come up to a lot of square yardage, so you're paying a lot more for that road than if you do it with Wallingford Road, which is a much longer road and, and will bring the, the unit price down dramatically from, from a small road. Just, it's a conundrum how to do it. <laughs> it, it is, it, it, that's why there's, there's some experience involved and uh, it, we have some great folks that, that make those calls and we try to do it as a group, um, but uh, th there's some folks really dedicated themselves to this program and uh, including Mark Cunningham, Rich Pruitt, Don and Dan, they 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 have a, a great feel for our road network. Thank you. That was that was a good answer. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments? At some point, George, I think I'd like to see the uh, listing of the roads and, and get a little more into uh, 
uh, into the program that's involved in this. A absolutely, we'll be, be happy to give everybody a, a copy of that list. And, and uh, if you wanna have a little tutorial, we can sit down with it as well sometime. Good, that would be helpful to understand. All right. Sure. Uh, moving right along, if unless there's more questions. Um, this is public properties capital budget. Again, I won't go too deep into this, but we, we have several projects tiered up, teed up in year one, um, the, the largest of which I know many of you um, are well aware of the HVAC and locker room improvements at the police station. And then in year two, we have some, uh, some more uh, paving of lots and, and roof replacements and that sort of thing. Next slide, sir. Is that the, oh. uh, that's the total piece of the police now? Cause I know there were some issues where it was gonna be over a couple of years. And then, uh, uh, so this is the total uh, uh, piece for the issues of the dampness and the other uh, issues that that building. That, that's a, actually a placeholder. Right, right now there's $400,000 that the council approved last year. Um, the PBC is, is in the act of hiring a, a consultant to um, actually, the, I believe the RFPs are due tomorrow. Um, and they'll be in the act of hiring a consultant who will give the, the town a price that's suitable for referendum or an estimate that's suitable for referendum um, before your August, September deadline for that. So that 1.4 is, is a placeholder I've kept in the budget. It, it could be hopefully less, that, that would be the goal. Hey, David. Yes. Yes, Mr. Jenks. So I assume it's the case that all these projects are also ones that we're, uh, we're bonding for and, you know, and removing them theoretically is not going to be a, a big impact on the budget. Is that correct? I'll, uh, I'll ask Jim to admit that. I guess it depends on the yeah, yeah, that's correct. It won't have a big impact on this 21 budget for sure. Um, is we won't be bonding these projects for another year out after that. The only the only thing I would add to that, though, uh, Jim, is that you know the council does, as you recall, in the operating budget, we appropriate one one million dollars for CNR, and we really I don't want to say we sort of back into that number, but basically the projects that are most appropriate for CNR, right? Back to what uh, Chairman Orris had said earlier projects that you really don't want to be paying for over 20 years, if they're useful life, right. it's going to be approximately 20 years. Um, you know, the council will certainly has some flexibility to drop our CNR number. Now, we've actually been trying to build that up over years because it's always better to pay cash uh, for capital projects, even even those that you could bond for, right? Of course, in the perfect world, we'd be able to pay cash for all of those. But, um, you know, to the extent some of these projects could be removed from year one, whether they have the ability to, whether they're CNR projects A, which, which you would then have that immediate flexibility to reduce at least for one temporary year, how much we appropriate for CNR. Um, to the extent you're removing a project that then therefore allows you to maybe bond a different project and have the same effect, uh, there can be some interplay there. But yeah, for the most part, these larger projects that are gonna be straight bonded are, are again, certainly a project that's already over a million dollars. You're not gonna be able to just move that into CNR if we only have a million in the operating budget for CNR. So right, I don't want right. to belabor that, but I just think, yeah, the CNR piece is really our cash, appropriated cash for capital in the in the first year. Okay, I mean, you know, it, it behooves us to be thinking about not only this year, but next, obviously. But um, I mean, one I'm looking at, and I don't want to pick on any one thing is, you know, the improvements of the youth center is something that we were looking at doing to kind of improve the space and make it more rentable. Um, and, you know, over the next year, obviously, who knows, when that would be that we'd be renting that space. Um, that's just one that kind of jumps out at me, but um, out of discussion. Well, and to dive in on that, I mean, that's the whole reason why I brought this subject up. We should be looking at seeing it is a million dollars. Now, granted, we're not gonna eliminate everything, but but that million dollars is a direct impact in, in the budget today. So uh, we're not gonna be uh, bonding that. Now, Jim, just to be clear, so last year's capital budget where we bonded dollars, you assume those would not hit our uh, debt service for two years out, is that correct? So 
you're not seeing any of that in, in the 21 budget? The, the capital that was just appropriated last year, uh, correct, that won't be bonded until this spring and we won't be paying debt service on it until fiscal 22. Okay. Um, By this spring, you mean February. I understand, so, all that since I understand the timing of bonding is sometimes beyond the one year behind. So if we, if we book it today, we'll see it next year. That doesn't always happen because the timing of your bonding can I get a sense of what we've done historically? Like, you know, two years ago, did we bond and we did see it till this year's budget? I don't recall all that. So can we get a schedule of basically uh, all of our bondings and when they were hitting basically our balance sheet? Yeah. Maybe books, but I don't want to have to go find them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if there's so much information here. I assume you, you can push me right towards it. <laughs> yeah. We can certainly do that. And and just to maybe follow up, uh, Rob, you had just mentioned CNR. Um, and, and one page that might behoove folks to just take a look at is in the bigger book, the vertical book, page 139 is the schedule of CNR. And in the first year, you can see the projects that we're proposing paying with cash that totaled a million dollars um, in fiscal 21. And so you'll see, I mean, it, it, we have the vehicle replacement funds. And I know we're, again, I don't want to dive too deep into capital. If folks don't want to do that tonight, but as you'll see, we have projects um, in 21 and then out in the next five years that uh, are at least at the moment proposed to be paid through cash. Um, you know, revaluation, for instance, something we do every five years, we always fund that through CNR, which makes sense because you don't want to bond that over 20 years. Um, probably ineligible anyway, but the, um, that's just a schedule that, that I just thought I could direct folks to. All Any right. Questions on that? There are okay. More questions here or are we ready to move on? Okay. Sure, and we'll jump to the next slide. Um, we're we're going to move from capital projects to kind of COVID staffing and then um, the budget, the, the current operating budget and kind of getting to zero, if you will, and, and, and those sorts of things. So we're, we're, we're very near the end, I can promise you. Um, but please ask whatever questions you like. <laughs> um, so as far as staffing for COVID, um, we've been, Public Works is in the, um, is a, an essential service, it's been deemed an essential service, and we've been treating it that way where we've been moving forward with all our projects and uh, whether they're engineering projects or capital projects. So um, on our engineering projects, we've had no delay. We're presently working on a drainage improvement on Sir Walter Drive where there's a flooding condition. We've got the Jarvis sidewalk uh, that goes up to the Guinevere Ridge area, uh, teed up, which is a state grant, and the West Johnson Bridge deck or uh, I'm sorry, uh, beam replacement that that's in moving forward for bidding. Um, some of our other capital projects, we've got uh, our, our paving beginning to line up as you see, our the library roof is, is underway, the replacement and HVAC replacement and some of the PVC projects for the summer are, are lined up to move forward. Um, so the we've had some minor delays with those with some uh, bidding issues and, and just kind of COVID uh, um, social distancing issues where we couldn't work on the basins for some of the roads um, and that sort of thing, but um, not uh, nothing major at this point. Um, the, the Highway and Grounds Division, we when the COVID crisis hit in full force uh, towards the end of March, we created a red and a blue team, split the crew in half to preserve manpower and for safety reasons, obviously, in case somebody came down with it, we didn't want the entire crew to get infected. Um, we didn't want anybody to get infected, number one, but we certainly didn't want the entire crew infected. So we, we had half and half, and uh, they spent a week on duty and a week in on-call status. Um, we did call in the on-call crews at times or members of that, those crews to, to do what I'll consider targeted projects that didn't put them in contact with the other crew members. Um, but as of tomorrow, 
for bringing the entire crew back back online and uh, creating social distance by by having them start their work assignments at different locations throughout town. Um, we've had crews every every weekend, mainly every Saturday, disinfecting the town buildings to try to make sure the buildings stay as clean as possible. Um, we had a, a pretty good wind and rainstorm April 13th. I'm sure everybody remembers that. Again, we had to call in some of the on-call crew during that day to for flooding conditions and, and trees down and various things. Um, so we, we did have uh, access to the crew for that. Um, and as of a few weeks ago, all the groundskeepers have been working full time because um, grass is growing, the you know, parks and the town buildings and everything else is uh, spring has sprung. So we're, all four groundskeepers are working, have been working full time for, for quite a while. Um, at the water pollution control plant, um, we had two on-call operators sidelined each each week just to, again, to preserve for safety purposes and to force preservation just in case uh, the worst happened and the, and the crew that was working um, had the virus run rampant through it. Um, but again, those those folks are going to be coming back off the, that on-call status this week. And moving on to the next slide, uh, which kind of dovetails into this, is some of the services impacted. Uh, we had to cancel some of our our um, routine events, electronics recycling, mattress recycling, hazardous waste recycling. Um, we've, we've obviously haven't had, been able to have large gatherings for information dissemination or training purposes or anything. Um, we've had reduced participation for bidding. It's one of the adverse effects. And we've had a, a spending freeze that's going into public works. Uh, so the, the manager has, has asked us to uh, just spend only what we need to do our core services, which is fine. We're obviously trying to save as much of this year, this current fiscal year's budget as we can and, um, and use it to pay towards next year. Um, the road paving, again, we had a late start performing our catch basin repairs, but we're gonna be picking that up uh, now as we have kind of a clearer roadmap going forward. And then um, I know Mr. Mr. Talbot often asks what what this COVID is, is uh, what future changes can be made based on the COVID uh, virus issues. And the, the biggest thing I think in public works is, is future use of Zoom meetings for inclement weather or anything else. We can, even if it's a snowy day or, or something and we have a, a meeting with RWA and Eversource and whatever to talk about something, we can do it as a Zoom meeting instead of trying to get everybody in one room. Um, short of that, the Public work, the nature of public works is that you have to put your hands on things, um, at least for the crew, certainly. And uh, so that it's, it's hard to do it in a remote situation. But um, we have learned that we can platoon the crew. We don't ever want to do that again. But certainly for, for safety reasons, we, we were able to do it, and um, um, which was great that nobody, nobody got the virus and, and we didn't have to deal with any of those impacts. Thanks uh, next that. slide. Yes, sir. No, Peter, did you have? You. Oh, all right. Okay, George. Okay, um, next slide, Mr. Kimball, please. So th this is just highlighting some of the discretionary funds. And again, this is, um, I, I've just picked these out and they're, I, I term them discretionary, but some of them really aren't. But this this is in the, the current, budget that, that you've seen um, in our, let me say, our existing fiscal year budget, and they're similar in the budget going forward for next year. But we have a construction line in the highway sidewalks and drainage for 255,000. And that's a, a line that we use for, for various things, landscaping of um, whether it's plow damage or some other kind of damage, um, some drainage reconstruction at times, targeted things that come up. We we get about 650 work orders a year requests from the public for, for assistance. Um, so that, that's where a lot of that, that money goes. Um, it also goes many years to offset the, the overage in the snow and ice account. Um, in the last, I think, dozen years, we've only been under budget three in the snow and ice. So many years were over budget 
by six figures. And that line kind of offsets the, the, the overage in the, again, that will be overspend in a harsh winter. Um, the summer engineering intern and summer laborers, we hire a number of laborers each summer to help ma mainly in the parks to, to cut the grass, line fields, empty trash, all, all the, the things uh, that that department or that division works seven days a week because the, the parks are used so much in a, in a normal year in the summer. Um, so cleaning bathrooms, everything else, all the stuff that goes on on the weekends, we need folks to, to do that. And uh, the, the overtime for full-time folks would be off the charts, um, but that is a $95,000 cost in the budget that, that shows up. Um, we, we have a geese control program at Mixville Park, which costs us almost $10,000 a year um, just to run the geese off each several times a week so that they don't nest there, I guess, and, and take up permanent residence and with the attending issues that that causes. Um, but that's an expensive proposition, although we're, I, I've costed that out for various services and we're on the low end at 9,600. Uh, it, there's numbers in the 30,000 range, which I probably shouldn't say publicly, so our vendor doesn't hear it, but, um, but it's a, it, that, that is a cost-effective service at that price uh, compared to some others. And then um, in the public properties budget, we have selected building projects, things like uh, just renovating bathrooms in some of the buildings or um, replacing a, a door here or a window there, things that we've planned to do, sometimes carpeting replacement, and that's about $21,000 a year that um, is discretionary, doesn't have to be done, but it's, uh, again, these buildings aren't getting any younger, so we try to keep up with them as much as we can. Hey, George, can I ask a quick question on the geese control? Yes, sir. Um, I, I know it sounds like a lot of money when you're trying to find dollars, but you know, this to me seems like a public health issue. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's making sure that uh, the people are using Mixville Park aren't walking through, you know, all of their stuff. And so uh, I just think this is a public health issue and I'm really reticent to look at this and, and cut this. If, if you're suggesting for $9,000, we do nothing and let everything happen. Um, I think it's really going to impact the availability of Mixville Park and the usability of it. And I think particularly now more than ever, people are looking for places to go and get outside. And so I'm just putting on notice that for me, this is probably a non-starter. I think it's something that's necessary. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, and I'm not, I'm not recommending cutting any of these. These are, these are like the, the full boat of what we got in this money. I just wanted to show you what some of the, some of the larger accounts that we have that are, um, aren't spoken okay, my, for. My apologies, George. I, I had to respond to an email that someone was sending me and I maybe misunderstood. I thought maybe this was something that was up for discussion of potential cut. Oh, no, no, no. All right, my, <laughs> my apologies, George. All right, thank you. So these Rob, are I, not, I, agree with, I agree with you as well, Rob. I thought that was, I, I thought that's where this was going as well. And uh, so uh, I appreciate that. But I, I would also agree with you. I think, if, especially as we look more towards Mixville Park as an avenue for town residents, uh, keeping that uh, as clean as possible uh, and, and as presentable as possible will be something that I would look forward to as well. So, uh, Rob, I thought that was a great point. Thank you. Yeah, and, and the other point I'll just make, because we may have public watching, but I'm understanding that we have a really bad dog poop problem at Mixville at this point, that, you know, residents or whoever are walking their dogs there are not cleaning up after their dogs. And the people that are there trying to use the park, I think it's a real issue. So I think we're going to have to address that in the short run as well, George. Sure, sure. No, and I, and I, I apologize. Can I ask if, a question, David? Yep. Uh, e yes, Mr. Jenks. Just, just uh, curious, what, what, are we, what is being done for, like, what do they do uh, for the geese control? What, what happens? We, we have a, a vendor uh, who comes and um, he'll addle the eggs in the spring, I guess, so he'll, he has a permit through the state to kind of shake the eggs so they don't uh, reproduce, um, which he gets annually. And then um, he has dogs that will run off the geese uh, that he shows up kind of kind of as needed, but probably three or four times a week, I would say somewhere in that range, um, maybe more often early in the year when, uh, when before they kind of get their habits down. Um, but that's mainly, he, he uses a kayak. Um, the dogs go in the water at times, and the dogs run around on the beach at times and, and just chase them away. So this is something that someone's like kind of licensed to do? 
Yes. Yep. He's, uh, he, he's, so, a, he's a vendor. Okay. So it couldn't be done by a, a, a volunteer group or something. I lost the second part of your, your comment. Uh, saying it can't be done by some sort of volunteer organization or some sort of uh, volunteer effort, I'm saying. I I, I guess it, it could. You, you need a permit, certainly, to addle the eggs or shake the eggs. Yeah. But uh, I, I guess if, if folks wanted to volunteer their dog, although his, his dogs are specially trained, they don't uh, they, they don't uh, take the geese down, if you will. So there's it's a no kill, um, yeah. not killing live geese. OK, that way. okay thanks. And there are a lot of people that are very sensitive to that we're doing this, both pro and con. Um, I know in the past we've had the geese so bad that the water has become unswimmable. It's become polluted. So it's uh, important that be kept up. Um, this list then is not from the current fiscal year that was on the savings list that the town manager gave us a couple Mondays ago. This is items for next year that you want us to know are something that might be able to be looked at. Is that correct? Co correct. Yeah, correct. These are not on the list from 20. That's, I mean, it's okay. some, of the, some of the same line items are the same line items, but they're not, we're not counting on next year's savings, correct? Okay. And the dollar is almost the same, too. I mean, somewhat similar. That's why. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's that's close. Why. Well, we, yeah, the, in total. You're right. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, and I apologize if I gave that impression. That the, the idea is just that I, I wanted to flag and you know, be certainly up front and show you that these are some of the larger discretionary line, what I'm gonna call mm -hmm. discretionary lines we have that aren't, aren't for, you know, spoken for by through a contract or through electricity or things right. like that that we have to pay. Um, I, I, would be, I would be overjoyed if they weren't cut at all, but I, I'll leave it up to the wisdom of the council at that point. <laughs> well, and you being know, think, the larger departments, you know, we certainly would have to look for some of the larger numbers potentially from there as well when we're looking to yeah. keep things down. Right. The, the only other thing I would add, I think, uh, David, is that, you know, while certainly the highways, uh, sideways, uh, sidewalks and drainage construction are, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, definitive projects that we use uh, there. Th that line from time to time when we have a really bad winter um, can offset because those are springtime projects. Um, there have certainly been years where if we didn't have enough appropriated in the snow and ice budget, uh, some of that has been uh, tapped into a little bit to offset and maybe hold back on some of those spring uh, construction projects. Uh, and frankly, as we were developing this year's savings, so while there's the 88,000 saved from the actual appropriated number in snow and ice, uh, that's one of the first years we've actually kind of hit that budget. We budget that very aggressively. Um, and so there, there's a little bit of what we've seen here is even though we didn't have a bad winter, we're having effectively a bad spring, <laughs> right? I mean, in terms of what's going on uh, internationally. So that's where some of those savings were derived from putting a stop to some of the projects that we were going to work on this spring. All right. And some of these may be, and I may be wrong, you tell me, would some of these tie in with road work and other projects as well? Like, for instance, drainage, you may do some drainage or some storm drains before you, uh, as you prep the road uh, in order to do a repaving. So this may be things that tie in and cross work together. Correct. Occasionally, um, although we, we do use the, the road paving for drainage at times if it's specific to that project. Um, this is more, we have, we have drainage running all through the town, all through people's backyards, through easements and everything else. And occasionally we have to get in and relay a section of pipe or, or clean a pipe out or do something like that. And, and this, this would, is kind of the non-specific account we use for that. Okay. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments regarding this? I have something, Ms. Barry. Sure. Yes, Mr. Walsh. Uh, George, uh, I assume with bringing back the full staff now, um, the, do you have enough PPE to give to them? And will the, I mean, I'm assuming they'll be wearing masks and everything else like everybody else is doing. And who knows how long that's going to be going on for, but that, that could be an added expense if it's not donated in some way. Or do you have enough, or is that something that you have to invest in? We, we've been buying PPE all along uh, for the town at large, or we've been part of it. Uh, Chief Kasner certainly has been coordinating a lot of it along with the town manager. Um, but we, we do have enough to give to the guys. We, we're limiting them to one person per truck, obviously, so they don't have, have issues there. And uh, that, that'll play what we can do to some degree, but we, uh, we 
we have and a I assume you're sanitizing the trucks truck after each person a lot. Like room, they do, uh, they do that with that the police. Social. Police, yeah. We we are. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we, we do that. We have wipes and they, they wipe the truck down on the inside when they're before and after their shift. Okay. Um, I do have a question on public buildings and it's on page 42. And I see um, uh, the town manager went back to pretty much level funding the uh, building property account. Um, what specifically was cut out in the $117,000 from the uh, 5404 account on page 42? Or is it just a general? Um, it, it's a, um, it's a, that's a great question. It actually ties onto the slide that we're looking at. So that's that those building projects in the, um, in, in that account, I, I proposed a, a much larger number of building projects and then the town manager cut it by that 117,000. Um, and that left a, a much smaller balance for building projects, which is in the, in the $21,000 range. So that that's where that comes from. Um, the, that it's a two-part account, and the the first part that's funded with two hundred ninety-eight thousand is things like our elevator maintenance, our fire alarm service, uh, cleaning service, all all the the necessary things you need to operate these buildings every day. And so that you can't do an awful lot to the maintenance contracts and things like that. So uh, uh, this is a right, discussion. Correct. Yeah, it's a little more discretionary, although they're starting to become more and more, you know, critical. I certainly would have liked to fund some of them. Uh, some of them were, were you know, upgrades at, uh, to the Upper Blood Arts Place building and other other things that were certainly uh, needed. Um, but we are, you know, they're sort of like a mini version of, of CNR, if you will. They're smaller mm -hmm. projects, sometimes, you know, older, whatever, it's a carpet replacement or something else. And some of these are things that you're just their upgrades or improvements uh, really to try to maintain um, the quality of, of some of the spaces, but uh, there are things that you could just kick off another year um, and, and keep asking for each year. And I, and I would love to be able to fund them, but this wasn't a year that we felt like we could do it. Um, but as George said, the other piece is that you can't go any real deeper than, than maybe other than that 20,000 is, uh, is, is required uh, maintenance and, and repairs that, that are kind of tied into contracts. Okay, very good. All right, um, George, you want to continue on? Yes, sir. I think Next we're slide. Near the end. We're very near the end. <laughs> uh, so this next slide is is just um, again getting to kind of level budgeting. This is the the service the the contracts we have in place that are going to go up next year, no matter what we do. Um, many of them are in solid waste, and again, we we spoke about some of this, but the the just the collection portion of the solid waste contract is going to go up by about twenty nine thousand dollars, about three percent. Um, the tipping fee is the uh, the unknown. Uh, again, seventy one thousand increase we're predicting, but that could be double or triple depending on what the uh, what the final tipping fee is. Um, and then we have hazardous waste disposal. Um, that went up dramatically. We had budgeted about $9,500 last year. Our actual costs uh, were running about 21,000. Um, we were fortunate that we, I don't wanna say fortunate, but fortunate for the budget, we didn't have the third collection this year because that'll make our, uh, that'll reduce our, uh, our overage in that line. Um, so the, this is through the Naugatuck Valley COG that we, we have the three collections. They're, they're turning to, turning out to be about $7,000 a collection. They're, they're uh, well used by Cheshire residents. It's based on car counts, um, which is great for the environment. Um, but this is one of those places where I can pitch you two different options. So if you'd like to continue with Naugatuck Valley COG, we have 23,000 in the budget for this coming year. Um, I also went back to Regional Water Authority uh, down at, in New Haven and asked them to recalculate if we rejoined them uh, for 22 collections a year, and that would be about 30,000 a year. So the, those are kind of the two choices, if you will. Um, if you wanna stay with the three collections at the COG, it's 23,000. If you wanna to go to many more collections at Regional Water, it's about 30. Um, so those are just some options I can give to you. David, can I chime in? All right. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Oliver. 
Hi, so, and this is where I was going with my earlier question. So thank you that I uh, wanted to wait till we got to this. I know, George, you and I have discussed this back when I was uh, chair of solid waste. Uh, uh, this was something that we had done um, to move away from the regional water authority to this, to the COG for, for this, because we were supposed to see some significant savings as a result of moving to that. And unfortunately, we moved to it, and then we immediately never saw those significant savings because the cost uh, rapidly escalated. Uh, and uh, and so the cost savings that we originally were going to see shrunk to something I think like eight or nine thousand dollars, maybe uh, versus like the fifteen or twenty thousand dollars that we were supposed to see. And of course, in the meantime, it obviously upset a lot of residents because now they. Uh, lost the ability to go to the regional water authority on a regular basis to get rid of their stuff, and they had to wait for one of three collections, you know, for the year. And sometimes those are 20, 30, 40 minutes away to drive, and then you had to wait in a long line to get rid of your stuff. Um, and so, uh, I'm glad we're bringing this up because, I, you know, one of the things I would like to—I know it's, a, it's an additional cost, but it's something I would hope that we can at least consider discussing for that. Six or seven thousand dollars additional. It does provide a great deal of additional convenience and service to the residents of Cheshire, and uh, I believe it's something that we probably could consider and hopefully uh, look at uh, as possibly going back to the Regional Water Authority because I think that that the level of convenience would increase the uh, participation. Uh, plus, as we can see, the participation cost is sort of. Uh, unknown with the cog, you know, uh, those those costs go up, and we're sort of we're sort of bound by whatever the the number of people who show up and the costs are going to be. So we don't really know what the old, overall cost of staying in the cog is going to be. We can estimate it, but it could go up, and in the end, it could actually end up costing us more than saying it's going back to the regional water authority. So, um, I mean, my just my thought is that at least for the minor cost increase, it's something that we should at least consider. Um, and thanks for bringing this up. Well, and one thing that I could say, and I know uh, Mr. Slocum could confirm, is that the RWA is not going to have a fee increase this year uh, for the water usage that was budgeted earlier in the evening. So we put off a rate increase consideration for a year and a half. Oh, good, good. We, we hadn't heard the year and a half part. Yeah, January of 22, we will revisit it. Okay, then we can do away with the 3% increase probably. Right. All right, other... Uh, Questions on this? All right, George, I guess we're ready to keep moving. Yes, sir, almost to the end. Keep promising that. <laughs> George, um, I hate to interrupt, but you keep saying that, so um, <laughs> I hope eventually you'll actually mean it. I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> eventually he's got to be right. I'm yeah. hoping to be right at some point. <laughs> Two more slides. Um, so th this uh, th this is just a recap of what Manager Kimball showed to to you folks in, in his spreadsheet for the savings this fiscal year, this current fiscal year, we're in um, a seventy thousand dollars savings out of public property, which comes from those those accounts that we're projecting in in underage, um, and then in public works, the accounts that we're projecting in underage um, are are listed to the right. Um, as you can imagine, like temporary part time, we had a large savings. Those are those summer help uh, college kids that we generally hire. We haven't hired anybody this year for obvious reasons, um, and we, we don't really expect to uh, at this point. Um, and then there's a bunch of uh, snow and ice was a huge contributor. The construction line item, I think we had, by doing a spending freeze, we're about 70, we have about $70,000 left in that account that we can turn back uh, to next year, towards next year's budget and, and everything else. Um, and then there's some capital projects that I'm sure he's spoken to you about, but some of these are CNR accounts like the, the owner's representative. There's $106,000 there for that. Um, the Weeks Pond improvements that's that's out there um, and some other, some other accounts that are available to be uh, considered for um, savings for this year. All right. Are there other questions and comments on this second to last page? All right, I guess we're on to the last page. Last page. <laughs> so this this is just a wrap up. We're this current fiscal year. I just want everybody to know that Public Works is operating. We're fulfilling our core responsibilities, even with this pandemic. We're sweeping the streets. We're we're prepping for paving. We're 
looking at sidewalk repairs, all the things we normally do, we're, we're still doing. Um, we have done a, a spending freeze, just so everybody's aware. Um, so we're not doing any discretionary spending or we're not doing any elective projects, whether it be in the buildings or, or to the infrastructure of town. We're trying to preserve as much of this year's budget as we can, this current fiscal years. Um, for next fiscal year, we've got a number of projects already teed up and ready for the, for the new year. And we look forward to, to performing our mission going forward, maintain the town's infrastructure to a high standard and provide excellent service to our residents. Um, so we're, we're ready to continue serving and, and we look forward to, to doing that. Um, we got a, I'll just say to, at the end, we've got a fantastic uh, team in public works. Our, the, the crew on the ground, whether it be at the treatment plant or the mechanics or the building division, or the maintainers and the crew leaders, all those folks are top notch. Um, and we've got a great office staff through the engineering division, um, the administrative staff that, that works with me. I, I couldn't be happier with the, the folks we have. And I, I think the residents can be very proud of, uh, of the team that's assembled here. So thank uh, you for your time. Uh, yes, Walter, you wanted to make a comment? Yeah, I just want to add one thing. and. That's for um, even though it's a separate budget, you know, that we've discussed the water pollution control department based upon the proposed budget, um, the sewer use fee would would re, would be a zero increase. Um, it would remain at the at current level. Oh, that that's good to know as well. All right, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Uh, just I had one I... uh, one oh, question, yes. Mr. Chair. Uh, Oh, you're, uh, you put it back on mute. Can't hear you, Tim. Unmute now. Okay, thanks, sorry. I get all these commands and I can't even follow them. Um, <laughs> Walter, I didn't know if this was one of the last times or if it was the last time we were all gonna be seeing you, um, but George uh, obviously sung your praises uh, earlier and I would echo those and, uh, I just didn't know what the story was with, with your timing, uh, if it was going to be uh, before this budget's adopted, after the budget's adopted, but I appreciate seeing you tonight and have appreciated all the work you've done with us as a council the last couple of years. Well, thank you very much. I, I've enjoyed working with it. It's been a, a very nice and uh, rewarding second career. Um, you know, I am a strong proponent of, of you know, going back to the <clears throat> where the, the engineering division was when I started, which was basically a town engineer and two others. Um, you know, we, we were able to get over $17 million of grants and, you know, do about a half a million dollars worth of work in-house that we would have had to contract out. And I think most importantly, uh, about a half a million dollars a year annual savings that that go forward, um, you know, that that uh, stay in the budget. So I, I think it's very important to, to keep that person. Um, as far as seeing me, you know, I, I expect to be here through June 30th. Um, certainly, I can't, you know, if you need somebody to to bridge it while you know you're getting the next person, that that's fine. Um, but you know, just kind of is the right time to leave. I got some. Uh, I got, I, I'm fortunate enough to have parents that are 99 and 102, but they also <laughs> require a little bit of care. <laughs> wow, good for you. Well, thank you for your service, I agree. All right, um, everybody, thank you very much. Before I hand it over back to Chairman Orris for the rest of the council meeting, I just wanna remind everybody that Thursday night's meeting, in order to combine things that Mr. Uh, uh, Talbot's uh, uh, good suggestion and not be out four nights late this week. We already had a meeting uh, as a full council with the Board of Ed set last week for tomorrow night. And then we will piggyback on that, uh, the remaining few departments that we need to uh, try to get to and uh, go from there. So, and then next Thursday, several people had, uh, had conflicts. So we're gonna try to uh, see if we can get some uh, budget workshop information out next Tuesday night if the council meeting runs uh, uh, fairly quick or Wednesday night as needed, but not next Thursday as originally scheduled. So these, these two Thursdays are off and we'll combine tomorrow night and, and maybe do next Wednesday. All right, uh, Mayor Orris, I'll hand it back to you to run the council meeting part. Thank you, Mr. Barry. I appreciate that. And before I ask for a motion to go into executive session to uh, discuss some personnel matters, 
Uh, I did want to address uh, one more budgetary item. Uh, we did all receive a lot of reach out regarding the pool in the last 24 hours or so. Many members of our community kind of questioning what the status of the pool and what our commitment is to the pool going forward in light of the pandemic and our budget. I guess there was an article in one of the, the local papers. I try not to read this stuff too much these days because uh, to me, there's nothing positive. So for, for me, I'm avoiding a lot of those articles. But nonetheless, I, I wanted to just try to address some of those that are concerned about the pool and have questions about the pool. And I know there's a number of members in the community that stand on both sides of this, but I can only tell you where I stand. Um, we have made a commitment to the pool as a community, and we have continued to invest in that pool. And there are a number of issues that have come up with some unexpected repairs that need to be done. Uh, specifically the pool liner, which we discovered has a number of rips that needs to be fixed really in a permanent way. Uh, a patching is probably not the best way to go from what the experts have said, and, and we're gonna look into this more. Uh, but I wanted to make it clear, at least from my perspective and any other council member should dive in if they feel otherwise, but uh, we are not looking to divert from investing in the pool and making sure that it stays a staple of this community. I personally think it adds a lot of value to this community. I know that there are many out there that, that think we should fill it in. I'm not one of those individuals. Uh, I believe it adds a, a big component to the architecture in services. So many of us pay for services that we don't personally use. I don't use the pool, but, but I do understand its value to this community. I don't use the senior center, but I understand the value to this community. So my point is we all support things that we don't always use on an everyday basis. And I consider the pool to be one of those. Um, I am certainly going to stand with the pool and continue to support finding ways to invest in that pool in a fiscally prudent manner. Um, in my opinion, that liner needs to be fixed. I think we've come up with a potential solution to reallocate some funds which are allocated in last year's capital budget to do the, uh, the epoxy decking, which is not really as big of a requirement as the, at least in my opinion, as the, uh, the liner. So we can use some of those dollars to, uh, to do the pool liner instead. It's pretty much a net zero effect to the budget, uh, essentially. And uh, I'm going to certainly advocate that we go forward and do that sooner than later. So I just wanted to address the issue because there seems to be a lot of questions on both sides of this. And I just wanted the community to kind of understand where I'm coming from. And I believe this council is still committed to investing in that facility in a very fiscally prudent manner. So. Uh, if any of the fellow council members here feel differently, please jump in. I am not looking to speak for all of you, but I did want to address the many, many questions that we received from people on both sides of this issue. So, so thank you. Chairman Orris, if I could only echo your sentiment, because I think as we discussed this the other day, uh, I don't think it was a question of whether we were going to open the pool. I think the timing of opening the pool was really being discussed, as well as the expense of, uh, of figuring out the replacement cost for that liner. So I don't think any of us exercised any judgment about closing the pool. It's just a, it's a matter of when it reopens, in, in my understanding of the thing. And, and, and that's really a pandemic kind of driven issue. So, you know, we'll reopen it when we think it's safe to reopen right. the community. In the meantime, we're looking to get things done that we need to get done uh, that probably are best done while the pool is closed and uh, it's filled. Right now, the pool has been drained, which is, is something that we needed to do. Certainly seems to be the appropriate time to replace that liner rather than refill it, move forward, and then in six months or a year have to redrain it and do the liner then. In my opinion, that's probably not the best way to go. Uh, I did ask some questions about patching, but I suspect the patching is only going to take us so long. And uh, But I think, Tim, to your point, it, it seems to me there was some article in maybe the Record Journal or one of the, you know, one of our newspaper groups that maybe didn't quite get it right and stirred up something. And I just think there's a lot of questions, and I just wanted to make sure that I took an opportunity to address the issue. So any other town council members would like to speak to this? If not... Uh, I'll move forward to a uh, motion for executive session. Well, okay, I don't see any. Uh, um, I guess with that then we'll move on and I'm looking for a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, personnel matters uh, to include our town manager, our assistant town manager, uh, Lou Zulo, our HR uh, director. And uh, Sean, is that it? Uh, yeah, that should be that should be it. I think you covered it. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank Second. 
Welcome, second, Mr. Veliver. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you to the public who are watching. This will be the end of the items. The only thing we'll do when we come out of executive session is motion to adjourn. So thank you all for watching and good night and stay well.